<coughs> Briar in uh, in March uh, for curling. This is uh, the the New Brunswick Super Bowl, and here it is on Super Bowl Sunday. With me is uh, Wayne Talon, uh, just newly arrived from Florida, and he'll be providing uh, expert commentary. Uh, as opposed to my club curler commentary. Wayne, uh, some introductory remarks? Well, uh, geez, uh, thanks, Andy, for, uh, for those kind words. Uh, I'll try and do my best in terms of uh, interpreting what the, you know, the guys are playing and uh, what they're thinking out there. But uh, it certainly is a pleasure uh, to be here with you and uh, with our audience uh, to watch this, uh, this final uh, two great teams, um, guys that uh, you know, have a lot of experience. Uh, they've been... At the national stage, uh, we've got three guys on the Roach team uh, that's been at the international stage uh, when they were juniors. So uh, we're in for some good curling, and so uh, buckle up and uh, stay tuned. Uh, the Roach team has blue rocks. Uh, you're seeing one of them go down the ice now. It, that team consists of the skip, uh, Jason Roach. Mate is his brother, Darren Roach. Spencer Mawenny is second, and uh, Jared Bizanson is the lead, and he uh, just threw his rock, top 12 foot. Uh, James Gretton will have the uh, yellow rocks, and James, uh, he's not going after that blue rock. He's going for the corner guard. He's uh, well known. Uh, if James were to win today, he'd be going to his 13th briar. His, uh, his mate uh, is uh, Paul Dobson. Uh, the uh, second on the team is Andy McCann, and the lead is Jamie Brannan. So what we're seeing here, folks, is that uh, so uh, Roach decided to uh, throw uh, her, his first rock into the rings, and then uh, James uh, is, you know, his traditional uh, strategy is to be very aggressive. So uh, he elected to put up a corner guard, so he's looking at uh, generating as much uh, offense uh, as he can and he'll be trying to draw the play to the wings, uh, whereas uh, Jason is uh, going to try and uh, keep the uh, play to the center of uh, the sheet, uh, center of the ice, uh, trying to minimize the scoring opportunities uh, for uh, for James. And Jerry appears to have a good rock here. They're trying to make a curl. It's hung a bit. Uh, Wayne, are you surprised that they are both going uh, aggressively early? A lot of times uh, teams will go up and down the ice for an end or so just to get a feel for the ice. Well, what this, what this is telling me is that, uh, first of all, uh, they're confident uh, that they have a good read on the ice. Right. And uh, so normally uh, when you're playing it clean for the first couple of ends, you're trying to, to learn, you know, the ice itself. But uh, it looks like uh, they're both confident that they know what the ice is going to do. So therefore, uh, they're going to start, uh, and as they have, uh, they're going to play pretty aggressive. Yes. And both teams will, would have played at least two uh, games on this sheet of ice. Uh, James, as the round robin winner, uh, was able to choose stones, I think, uh, color and uh, the set of stones. Yes, exactly, and uh, that's the the rules of uh, of curling. Uh, so if you're the outright round robin winner, uh, you always get a choice of uh, stones, and uh, also you get the advantage of the last rock in the first end. We have a takeout call here uh, from Spencer Mawinney. Looks like a nose hit, a little bit of a roll to cover uh, number one on the forefoot. Not a bad shot at all. No, exactly. So it, it looks like it's a bit of controlled aggression here. Uh, James has the corner guard, but he's not allowing a blue uh, roach to build up much of a, a compliment in the house. Yeah, exactly. That, and you know, that, it's the way the end uh, sets uh, sets itself up. Uh, you know, by by the shots that you're you're attempting to make. Uh, and uh, in this particular case, uh, there's a double opportunity. Ooh, just and, missed. Uh, he just missed it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, by just missing it, he's also left uh, a, a guard on the yes. blue rock. So here's the aggression right here. So uh, um, Roach would have, uh, you know, he, exactly. So he can play. So now he's, uh, he's yeah. changed his strategy. So yeah. it, it wasn't uh, the original call. And uh, so now he's playing a little uh, defensive. Yeah, his original call was to kind of double up on the guard, was it not? Exactly. And here he's hoping for to remove the corner guard for James. Uh, and attempting to do the same thing, but with a different, uh, with a different shot. So a uh, hit and roll. 
um, but it looks like uh, Spencer might have been a little inside the broom there and he's nosed, uh, nosed the guard. So now James has got an opportunity to either draw to the blue one or play the straight back uh, takeout. Right. Yeah, all, all that Spencer accomplished with his shot was to have the guard change color. Exactly. Nose hit. And we have Andy McCann in the hack coming out. Really good curler, Andy. Uh, you know, been playing this game for for a long time, and uh, he's been to a couple of briars, and uh, and is always, always in the uh, you know in the running for uh, for a championship. And uh, he's got uh, he's he's known to to have really great weight control. And as you can see right here, yeah, we're seeing that little tap back, and uh, he's laying shot rock. So. Uh, Maybe not as not quite exactly the shot that he uh, attempted, but uh, he he never makes any big mistakes. I guess that's yeah. that's what I'm getting at. Well, there's certain players that seem to the championships seem to follow them around as opposed to them chasing uh, championships. They uh, they're just known to be good, steady players, and uh, good teams want them. Darren Roach has been asked to uh, throw a takeout here. With this ice, Wayne, uh, he's going to have a fairly peppy weight on that. Yes, uh, the players, we were talking to them there before the game and uh, we were talking about the ice and, uh, and the amount of curl. And uh, so they're, they were telling me that it was, uh, you know, four and a half feet of curl would draw and, and a good foot of curl with uh, regular takeout weight. It was important for Roach to have that rock remain, but uh, it's rolled out. The reason it's important is that uh, if with two blue rocks, uh, we were trending towards a force on James. Uh, that is now, at the moment, at least gone by the boards. And that's a good point, Andy. I mean, uh, you know, textbook curling is uh, when you have last rock, you want to score two. And uh, when you don't have last rock, you want to keep the other team down to one. And uh, so in this particular case, exactly. Uh, so uh, now James is, uh, has got uh, an opportunity here to score more than one if, uh, if Paul can uh, execute this shot uh, as called. Yeah. Oh. I think from the hack, uh, that blue rock was probably wide open for him. They're trying to uh, manage the, the uh, weight and uh, line here. Did a little bit of directional yeah, sweeping. Yeah. A little flop. Yes, Absolutely. nice shot. Yes. That was... Perfectly uh, executed shot, right? Good call, yes. good throw. Yeah. And the sweepers uh, were in the shot as well. So uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the throw, uh, they were sweeping to keep it straight. And then at the very end, uh, you know, they, they a little bit of directional sweeping to try and make it curl and finish right. hard. And directional sweeping is, is generally around 45 degrees to the line of the rock, uh, the path of the rock. And that will make it uh, either curl more if you're doing uh, towards the curl, or if you're working against it, we'll try to keep it straighter. Uh, Roach, uh, Team Roach, Jason, looked at the run back shot, but uh, instead the uh, team has decided to uh, draw in two, number one. And this is uh, Darren Roach throwing this. I noticed that uh, Spencer McWinnie had the stopwatch out, just trying to get the uh, set down to release time. Exactly. They're sweeping this pretty hard, I think. This looks a little light, doesn't it? And I think he's going to be on the guard as well. Yeah. So he's just going to clip the guard. Clip the guard, and it's almost put it on. Uh, but I think uh, blue rolled on, but white, or sorry, yeah. yellow did not. But that was a good... Um, you know, there's there's good misses and bad misses, mm -hmm. Andy. Right, so that's a good right. miss. There's there's a, a you know a thrower that that knows his options and uh, definitely his option was not to be heavy. Right. So therefore, he threw it a little light. Uh, you know, left it to the sweepers, and um, but uh, you know the end result is that he missed the the, uh, the original shot, but he still left his rock in a really good position. He did, and James has been forced to deal with it too because uh, certainly it would be a run back or tap up. What they're trying to do, I think, Wayne, is hit the blue and roll yeah. in a little bit. So now that he's a little heavy, guess what happens? Wow. Bang, right Jam. back onto the yellow one and jams it. So now advantage back to Roach. Yes, uh, definitely. You know, cat and mouse. Uh, and uh, for the first end of this yes. game, we've seen, uh, you know, some aggressive calls and uh, some not-so-aggressive calls. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one half miss here, and then, ooh, all of a sudden the end changes and uh, it's advantage Roach. Yeah. And this provides uh, Jason an opportunity to throw uh, a draw under a little bit of pressure as opposed to warm-up throws. 
he's giving himself quite a bit of ice here, Wayne. Yeah, he is. Um, the only the only disadvantage about this particular shot, I mean, if he makes it perfect, he's going to leave James with a straight back hit. Right. You know, because he's he's hiding his rock behind James's stones. Um, you know, another call here might be to draw in behind that corner guard, which is his own rock. Yes. And make James, uh, you know, throw away from center and away from those two yellow ones. Right. So, um, you know, it just it, this is not a bad call. But, uh, I mean, there, there, there was another, another option there uh, that he uh, should have considered. For sure. And, boy, this is curling. They gave it lots of ice, but it's working hard. Right now they're sweeping, I guess, more for weight than line, but they're trying to get a little bit of, yeah, it's a corner behind. Oh, more than that. Probably, what, two-thirds behind, do you think, Wayne? We're two, not Two-thirds behind, and uh, but, you know, like I mentioned earlier. They're the run backs. James, James is trying to run back all day. I mean, even if he misses it, uh, he has an opportunity to roll off of the stone that he's trying to raise back onto the blue one, roll over and kiss the other yellow one into the rings. Which will force... Uh, Jason to deal with that as exactly. opposed to guarding, yes. Yeah. And and now right now what James is thinking is that, okay, I don't want to give up a steal. So right. as long as I score here, you know, I'm happy. Yeah. And uh, so that's the thought process that's going through his mind right now is that he does not want to give up a steal of one. No. They're having a, a good talk down at this end here, probably discussing Wade and line. Probably uh, Jamie and... Uh, uh, and uh, Andy are sorting out who's going to sweep close to the stone, depending on the uh, exactly and uh, the good lines. Co good communication, and then they walk away and they let uh, you know let their skipper uh, focus and uh, concentrate on the uh, on the throw that he wants to. Uh, uh, Jamie's sweeping to that. That's to keep it straight. There's a lot of. You only look at this. Very nice shot. Oh, look at the roll. All right. Yeah, he's almost got a wonderful roll, but it's uh, I think it's wide open there, but uh yeah. So this would this be take out. You wouldn't bother with uh, any kind of freeze or anything like that. That would be wildly aggressive. Yeah, you? yeah, exactly. And it's and, and it is the first hand and uh, Jason's been going back and forth. He started off being aggressive and then he you know, he made a uh, a very defensive call and then he went back to being aggressive and yes. then another defensive call. Here, uh, I mean, he could, uh, you know, th the best shot here would be to hit that Yellowstone and roll in behind his uh, his corner guard. His blue, yeah. Exactly, and then force uh, James uh, to uh, draw the forefoot uh, for a single point. It would be a long roll to go the other way, to go to the uh, right as we're looking at it, because those two yellows are kind of overlapped there. Yeah, and that wouldn't be a bad, uh, a bad call as well. Uh, the only thing is that uh, you're rolling uh, further away from center. For sure. And making uh, James's draw uh, that much easier. And the other thing is too, the, they're very different shots, so uh, they should be clear the sweepers. Well, wow. threw a little too heavy. Yeah. Uh, you know, good throw, good throw, just uh, just a little too heavy. So now the opportunity uh, is that James could probably try a split here for uh, two. Yes, they're certainly looking at it, aren't they? Mm -hmm. For two, but not for three. No. Okay. And I think he's going to attempt it. Not a bad call. Not no. a bad call at all. No. Um, you know, first end. Now, what would his objective be? Wayne hit that on the nose, uh, the the uh, one furthest out or closest to the center, or more or less glancing blow and have a shooter roll on and uh, one, one of the yellows go on. I think that's what he's trying. I think the other way would be a lot more difficult to okay. uh, split them on the high side. Right. So he's trying to get to the low side. We'll see what Paul is calling here. No, I think they're, they're trying it from the high side. The high side means... Uh, to the right of the uh, first Yellowstone. Right, on the broom side of the Yellowstone. Exactly. As opposed to curling by it and giving a glancing blow. Exactly. Very difficult shot. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's risk and reward, I mean, right. obviously. And uh, uh, James, uh, James is going to take the risk. The worst thing that could happen is that he only scores one. That that is the worst thing to happen. <laughs> if he if he threw it through or somehow came up short, uh, no no uh, no damage done. Looks like he might have been a little heavier wide, and he's only going to score the one. Yeah, I think it's just the one. 
Andy McCann's looking down at it, yeah. but I think he's going to kick it off. Yeah. He was just a little heavy. It's yeah. a really good, really good attempt, though. It really was, yeah. <clears throat> now, how often would people, uh, people like James or, or Jason Roach, how often would they practice shots like that? Would they actually devote much time to that, Wayne, or is that just something you pick up from experience? They, uh, yeah, pretty much by experience. Uh, they're not, uh, you know, the type of shots that, uh, that you practice. Um, uh, when you're out practicing, uh, you're looking at uh, line of delivery, release, um, and those, uh, those types of, uh, yes. of, of situations. Um, the the shots uh, shots like that uh, you may try them you know once in a while but uh, certainly not something that you go out every day and uh, and practice and you don't really see it that often uh, the opportunity so uh. that's right so now the uh, you know they're playing the second and <clears throat> James is up one uh, without the hammer so first rock will be called uh, to the top eight maybe even a top four foot uh, by uh, Jamie Brennan. Uh, next shot, I would say probably uh, Jason's going to either uh, throw up a corner guard uh, or he can even throw a centerline guard and guard this yellow rock if he wanted. Uh, but more, more likely, he's going to throw a corner guard. James then is going to come down and then bump that yellow one up. And then Jason's going to attempt. There you go. Uh, his next shot will be either the guard to the left or double guard the right-hand side. Right. <clears throat> and actually, those are... Uh, we've been talking about that, Wayne. A lot of it's something like chess. There's standard openings in chess, and there's standard openings in uh, curling as well. Exactly. So you're setting the end up. Yes. And uh, obviously, you know, the last three shots by each team uh, in each end are the are the critical shots. Yes. And, uh, you know, the, the, the job of the front end is, is to set set the back end up uh, for uh, for that uh, aggressive strategy right and to this point the first two rocks of the end uh, the uh, the skips of uh, the leads have delivered what the skips have asked for exactly which is not surprising because uh, uh, Jamie Brennan and uh, Bizanson are both very good leads uh, there's been a lot of good lead play this week Wayne at the, at the uh, tankard yes I was looking at uh, <coughs> some of the stats and you know the guys are playing in the high 90s and yeah. uh, so they're missing you know like one or two shots per game yeah you know out of 20 shots and there's the call um so jason has <coughs> he can hit this or he can throw the double guard or he can throw the guard on the left hand side so right. he's playing a little defensively yes uh second end early in the game uh you know pretty good call I wonder if it'd be possible to actually hit that or make the double and not be on the rings. In other words, still be in the free guard zone. I don't know. He was looking at that, yeah. And yeah. I think uh, I think he did say that uh, it wasn't there. Uh, no. But uh, you know what? Even a little high side on the yellow one and not make the double, but leave your blue stone frozen to the yellow one, just ugh, almost. Almost, right? Yeah, so, almost different situations here and uh, you know that's the that's what you were looking for they could have swept that a little bit and uh, and played the other shot yeah uh, that is something I've noticed this week is is that some some teams quite frankly are better than others at picking up plan B's and uh, alternatives you know Andy and sometimes that's the difference in a game it, yeah I can believe it you know buddy that's in the house is on his you know is on his game he's on his toes and uh he knows angles. He knows uh, how the rocks are going to react, and uh, so therefore he can call, call the sweeping accordingly. And uh, you know, I, I I've had the opportunity to play with guys like Russ Howard. I played for James uh, as well, and uh, you know, um, those guys, they 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 study the ice. They uh, they're they're really good, uh, really good strategists, and. Um, they, they certainly look for uh, for those types of opportunities uh, to uh, to change a shot. That was a lovely uh, roll, but uh, Dandy McCann got there. Exactly. Behind the blue guard. Jason's asking for something similar from Spencer Mowinney. Uh, and he's made it absolutely perfect. He really, oh, oh just a little <laughs> far maybe. This is kind of a Christmas tree, the uh, yeah. Alan O'Leary uh, expression. James is uh, so that's this is uh, this very interesting call here. Um, 
So what he's trying to attempt is uh, to hit the, uh, obviously, the blue onto the yellow, the yellow onto the blue that's shot rock uh, in the 8-foot. Uh, and uh, if, he, if he executes it perfectly, um, he'll guard his yellow rock with his shooter. Right. Not doing too much on this. It must be waiting. Wow. Nicely done. However, it leaves blue uh, lighting one. That's right. And now Jason has an opportunity to lay two. Yeah. Uh, with with hammer, uh, back to the uh, textbook uh, strategy. Yes. You know, give up one, take two. Give up one, take two, sort of thing. And uh, I like the math at the end of the game. Uh, you're going to win a lot of games if uh, if you execute it that way. Well, even <laughs> if you can, uh, a good portion of the game do it. You don't have to yeah. do it every end, but. Uh, now, would he want this to uh, end up being number one, uh, or does it really matter? What he's trying to do is that he wants, the first first thing he wants to do is pair it up with the rock that's in the house right now so he doesn't leave a double. In terms of height, yeah. Exactly. And they've executed that maybe a little deep. So now James has an opportunity to hit the blue rock that's in the full eight foot, roll over to the rock that's in the, uh, that's in the 12 foot. Yeah. And it, the double might be there. He's, he, but I was going to ask you that. They're going to have to throw it hard, though. Uh, it's pretty flat. It's uh, and it's a you know it's a four or four foot roll, and plus you got to bump uh, you know forty four pounds of uh, of granite, uh, three feet. Yeah. So um, this is going to come down with uh, some pretty good weight. And I think Barry can throw weight accurately. It's kind of hanging though. It's more or less yeah. It's a nose yeah. hit. However, advances the stone up, which would make the double easier if, That's right. if so now Roach gets a red nose hit. Jason has to roll. Um, he can roll. He can try and roll in behind the guard. He can, yes. If he hits it on the nose, you're right. The double's easier. But the call right now is to roll over to the uh, to the uh, 12 foot on the left hand side, and minimize the uh, the opportunity for uh, James to make a double. And it'll change James's call too, right? So uh, For sure. he won't go after the rock uh, on the left-hand side. He'll try and throw the intern uh, to the rock that's uh, partially behind the corner guard, and try and roll in behind that corner guard. Okay. They're calling for sweeps. I think he'll get a bit of a roll, not much, but maybe enough, Wayne. Uh, it's the double there. Yeah, I think it's still there. Uh, James, uh, James is calling, calling for that shot, and they're throwing down a little bit of negative ice. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. Uh, would you know, that be because of uh, Dobson's release, that, or that? That would be the reason why. Yeah. He throws it maybe slightly, a little inside out. Inside out, so it stays and, really straight. And it stays, ex yeah, really, really, really straight. Here's the roll that you were talking about, Wayne. There it is. And who is Who's, shot? <laughs> I was going to ask you that. You, you beat me to the punch. I think it might be blue. No? Oh, it is blue. Yeah, it is blue. I, Jason I, is calling for blue. So now he, uh, yeah, he draws the open side. Yeah. Big shot for this end. Yes, it this, is. This is a, you know, a do or die shot. Uh, because if they miss this one, then James uh, has an opportunity to score the... Uh, to steal? To, 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 to uh, steal the point, yeah, exactly. Or to force, yeah. Yeah, you want to be forced to take a two or a three, not <laughs> to take a one. That's right. Looks like it might be a little bit heavy. The sweepers are backing off on it. and uh, That's sliding pretty good. It really slides, this. Uh, but it is going to stop in time, I think. And maybe not. A little heavy. Yeah. So Darren, uh, <coughs> Darren has thrown number three. You know, hats off to the ice makers, uh, Andy. Um, yes. Typical ice that you would see at the Briar on arena uh, in in an arena. The inside out draw shots are always quicker than the outside in shots. And what I'm saying there is that if you're drawing to the four foot. You're probably getting a 380 split from back line to T line. When you're throwing through to to the wings, it's more like a four second split. Yeah. That's how much faster it is drawing to the uh, to the outside. Which is more or less the reverse to typical 
uh, curling club. Uh, exactly. Because yeah. generally there, uh, you go to the wings, it can slow down. Yep. So, you know, uh, you know, hats off to, uh, you know, Joe Mason, our, our, uh, our ice, uh, chief ice technician here at the Capital Winter Club, who is uh, assisting with uh, Chris Tapley. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a really, really good job. And uh, the boys, uh, I was talking again uh, you know, about that uh, to them before the game, and they, uh, they said it's been like that the whole week. And there's been a good crew of volunteers helping out, Mike Steves, and uh, it's been kind of shepherding that group around. And uh, oh, that, oh, that didn't work out quite as planned. Over curled a little bit, and that was uh, an unfortunate miss. Yeah, and, uh, hit the yellow James before it hit the blue. Yeah, exactly. There's no real double on those blues either, so if uh, if Jason's able to hide his blue or partially hide it, then uh, James Grant's got a big decision to make. There's a, there's an instance that last shot, uh, Wayne, where somebody threw a pretty good rock and it almost made it, but it did. And as a result, we have a we have a situation here where yeah. there could be a multiple given up. So I don't know if it overcurled or, you know, maybe he didn't take enough ice. Uh, right. We're not quite sure. I, I thought he threw it really, really well. Yes. Um, you know, he uh, he's pretty accurate, uh, both uh, in turns and out turns. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I think it was just a question of uh, maybe not taking enough ice. Right. Um, but now uh, you know, Jason's got an opportunity here to score three, and that's a big end uh, in, in a final uh, like this. Uh, uh, I'm surprised though that he's throwing to the uh, to the open side. I was uh, going to ask you that because uh, because he he will he will leave James an opportunity to make a double and uh, get himself out of the end. Uh, right now James is uh, thinking, "Geez, all I want to do is give up two. I don't want to give up three. Right. And uh, this call here, I, I, I don't know. I, I I'd be tempted to draw around the corner guard. Right. I suppose their fear yeah. was is that James might follow him and freeze and. And yeah, buried or something. But if you if, you know, you're you're playing for a, uh, a, ch a provincial championship to make it to the Briar. Those are the kind of shots that uh, you know that you got to make. And um, this isn't light. It looks like it, he wants what just above the T. T line or better. He, he wanted more curl than that too. So with the angle right now. There could be a triple. I was wondering that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paul. Paul sees it. Uh, I'm not sure if James is is looking at it himself. Um, so they might be talking to each other, right? Yes. So James didn't uh, didn't indi indicate to us that uh, that's the shot he's trying. But I, I'll guarantee you right now, Paul Dobson is standing there thinking about making a triple takeout. Yeah. He, James would have to hit what seven eights. Three quarters of that. Exactly. Hit the one that's by uh, Paul Dobson's feet and jump over and hit the one on center line. The the risk here is, and I doubt if James would do this, but a lot of us uh, club curlers, you're not a club curler, but I am, is that you overthrow this because you're thinking you need uh, you need the extra weight, but the yeah. ice is so fast and the rocks are so reactive. This is close. This is real close. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, didn't get the double either. Didn't get the double, so now uh, it's a draw for three. Yeah. <clears throat> Had to hit a little thinner. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it came didn't came up a little too much. Well, well. The nice thing about about the situation, I mean, it's not nice that, you know, you're giving up a three ender, but the other thought that comes through your mind is that it's early in the game. It is early. I'm only down to, I've got eight ends to go. You know, start playing a little bit better. You know, get a deuce in the next end. Game's tied. Give up one in, uh, in four. You're down one. Take a deuce in five. All of a sudden, you're up one. Right. And uh, so, you know, that's that's a kind of uh, thought process that should be going through, uh, you know, Team uh, Grattan's uh, minds right now. And, right. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're the coach, you, you know, you get out there and you just say, okay, guys, you know, little hiccup. Don't worry about it. We got lots of time. 
uh, stay focused, and, uh, you know, let's stay in the game. Now, this is the th first third of the game, uh, and it's not even over yet. So a one, a two, and then you get another two, and uh, you've... <coughs> That's right. You have a chance to win the first third of the game. Yeah. The one thing about it, uh, the, the the Grattan team, there's a lot of experience here. This would not put any kind of panic in the troops or anything like that. No, absolutely not. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, great teams like uh, like Grattan's team, um, that could light their fire. It could. Uh, and I've seen that happen many, 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 many times. Um, the good teams, you know, the, the, the weaker teams, they would get down and... Yeah. Uh, you know, the s shoulders uh, start to uh, slouch and uh, the expressions, you know, start to look, uh, you know, dim and so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah, the body language. The yeah. body language, yes. right? Uh, you know, and, uh, and you know, they're done. Yeah. But uh, I'll guarantee you right now that Team Grattan's not done here, guys. No. That was just a little hiccup and they're going to... They're gonna well, as, to as you pointed out just before that rock hit, it was close. And uh, if nothing else, it was very close to the double, and it actually had a chance for the triple. Instead, it jammed and gave up two, allowing a draw for three. So it's not like uh, James <coughs> is throwing poorly or uh, Paul's judging badly or anything like that. No, it's, no, absolutely. Those things happen. Plus, you know, what we haven't talked about is the five rock rule. Right. I mean, great opportunities to put up a lot of guards. Uh, you know, you can put up three guards before the other team can hit one of them. Yes. And so, uh, you know, as long as your front end is executing uh, those shots uh, and uh, providing you with the opportunity to, uh, to hide rocks behind those guards, uh, you're going to score a multiple, uh, multiple point in. And really, with the uh, five rock rule, the, uh, the importance of, of lead, good lead play is, is magnified because they set the tone for the whole, for the whole end. Exactly. And, um, you know, talking to... Uh, Jason and Darren Roach before the game and uh, you know Darren made a really good comment uh, talking about uh, the different uh, roles now that the players yes. have uh, because of the five rock rule and uh, he mentioned he said you know your second stone now is not only a hitter he's half a lead as well yes. because he has to be as good of a drawer as the lead is uh, because uh, in, in most cases he can't hit until his second stone of, uh, of, the, of the end so right and even if he does attempt something on his first rock, it's a soft weight tap or a weagle <laughs> shot, uh, you know. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, uh, what used to be a, a, a real hitter's position, second, has uh, become a, a f required a fair bit of finesse. Yeah. I like this call here. So James, uh, as you saw, uh, you know, he pointed to the uh, team. He said, listen, do you want to put up another corner guard? And uh, they said, no, you know, we like this shot here. Those those two blue stones are pretty well frozen. Yes. So if you throw your yellow one and uh, hard enough to remove the second blue one, but leave your yellow one in front of the blue one, all of a sudden now the end changes and advantage Grattan. Right. Now the sweepers will be managing this, according to James's call. Jamie looks quite close here. Jamie Brandon's rock. Oh, he's thrown it perfectly. Bingo. And there's what you were talking about, Wayne. Exactly. So now Jason, J if Jason wants to remove the stone, guess what? He has to clear everything. Everything. And now James has got a corner guard to go hide in behind. Right. Perfect strategy. Um, and uh, now all you got to do is execute. Now he's going to try the same. Or is he just tapping it to the... He can try that too, but guess what? James is going around the corner guard, I'll guarantee you, okay. if, he, if he makes that. And, the the and tap that's why not, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this Good is thought process here, Andy. Like, uh, so uh, they're drawing? Yes. Right? So they're going to leave uh, all three rocks in the house. Right. And then... Uh, James, if this rock is, is, is executed perfectly, James is going to have to play the hit. Yes. And could possibly, you know, himself remove remove his stone. But it, it's over curling. It is. Wow. By a yeah. lot, it's just yeah. half a rock. <clears throat> so now James has got to double take out the lay two. Or... Okay. You can play aggressive and say, okay, we're going around the corner guard. Yeah, because he is number two, and he's kind of hooked on that back blue one, isn't he? That's yeah. that's a difficult removal for a Roach, Team Roach. 
So he's got he's got three options here, right? Yeah. Play the double. Yes. But he's going to leave Jason with a double. Right. Play the hit and roll to the right because then there's no double on the two yellow ones because the the second yellow one is going to jam on the back blue one. Yes. Or make the double and roll in behind the corner guard. A little too heavy. Oh, Curious. unfortunately. Yeah, just yeah. out. Just overthrew it a little bit. So now <coughs> the removal of the yellow hits. Hit and stick, more or less yeah. blue in front of blue. So if I was Jason here, I, I, I would really try to attempt a double. So remove the yellow and the blue, leave your, your shooter uh, in the rings, because the second blue rock that's in the house right now is behind the T-line. It's a friend for uh, the Grattan team. Exactly. <coughs> and and there can, you go. Yeah. That's perfectly executed. James now has a chance, an opportunity with Andy McCann's shot to... Uh, Either hit and roll, but he's going to, is he? He's going to draw, or is he going to play the hit and roll? That ice could be either one, couldn't it? We'll, see. See, we'll tell as soon as he slides no. out here. Yeah, he's playing the draw. So, uh, really nice call. I really like this call. And uh, he's trying to generate his deuce. And here's a prime opportunity for him uh, for him to do so. He's coming down and wait. Jamie Brennan's getting ready to sweep it to uh, put some finish on it. Oh, that's perfectly executed. Yeah. Very nice shot. As you mentioned. Uh, Good shot. Very nice, very nice rock from Andy McCann. Now the guard goes off. So what Jason is trying here is that uh, he can play the straight back uh, yellow onto yellow, remove the two yellows, and then he could actually roll his shooter over to the center line and so, guard his blue one. Now, that yeah. would be an absolutely perfect shot. Yeah, that'd be a four <laughs> on the four for sure. <laughs> Here they go. Darren Roach has thrown. It's an appeal, but he will roll out. Now, James is probably going for the hit on and roll on the blue, roll to the right. Yeah, well, we've got uh, four shots to go. Okay, he's looking so at the guard, too. He can play the hit, leave the double, play the hit and roll, no double. Now he's got to go hit, stay, hit, stay, hit, stay, hit, stay. Yes. Or he could put up a corner guard and guard the yellow one. And draw play there for a while. Yeah. And uh, so he's elected to uh, try and uh, play the hit and roll. I think Paul might have been a little slightly inside. Yeah, I, I thought I detected a kind yeah. of a little dump, a bit of a dump on release. Yeah, so he's going to... Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate. If if it had yeah. knocked it out, it might not have been too bad. But we're now looking at a blank, aren't we, Wayne? That's right. So um, Four rocks to go. There goes, you know, the strategy, you know, pawn to uh, <laughs> yeah. rook seven and uh, whatever. But uh, um, so uh, that's what James is looking at now. Okay, yeah. let's uh, let's blank the uh, third end, get the hammer uh, back in the fourth end. Now I've got advantage because I've got the even ends right. going for me. Uh, so, uh, you know, the one, two, one, two uh, scenario uh, I've got last rock, uh, one up coming home with the hammer in the 10th end. Yes. Um, so those are all the thought processes that are going through uh, their minds right now. And it's, you know, they've played so much at the competitive level, it's, it's automatic. It's really nothing they need to even discuss, I, I imagine. No, no. You're it it right. is a case, though. Uh, there always are options for rocks. And I remember I was told one time... Uh, the second best strategy made is a lot better than the best strategy missed. <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> execution really trumps strategy sometimes. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, strategy only works when you're making the shots. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> now that rollout uh, means that uh, Roach can kind of dictate where the uh, takeout play will occur. And this, you know, playing skip or whatever... Um, is uh, you know is a, a choice. Uh, so throw so I, through. Can, I can throw I can throw it in the rings or I can throw it through. What do you think of this? And um, and I like the move. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, what he's telling uh, James is that uh, you're going to have to play better to beat me. Yeah. That's the message that he's sending. <clears throat> well, 
Well, right now, uh, they are playing better. Uh, That's the three, right. The three-ender came from a couple misses. Not bad throws, but misses. And uh, you're up three to one. Even if James gets his two, you're talking about a tie game. It's early, mind you, but... Uh, the only thing here, though, um, that, you know, about that shot is the fact that you're giving James an opportunity to get his draw weight. Yes. And you know that he needs his draw weight if he wants to get back into this game. Yes. Right? So that's the only drawback about, the, you know, that the, particular strategy. The, uh, the throw through. The throw I wondered about <laughs> it for that reason. Just back a T-line. Back eight weight it was. It's on the back 12, but uh, if it if it was on center line, be back eight. That's right. Now this is an opportunity to uh, check out the curl way out in the wings. Yeah, so a pretty uh, you know pretty easy shot, I guess. Uh, well, nothing's you know easy, but. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's open just, anyway. It's wide open. And, yeah, it's uh, wide open. Yeah, just a matter of uh, throwing the uh, throwing the right weight <clears throat> and making sure you throw the right hand. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's not like baseball. Two out of three doesn't really do it. If you <laughs> <laughs> right right weight, good line, and the wrong handle, there's you don't get uh, eight million dollars a year for that. No, no. Not so he rolled out, and now James has got uh, an opportunity to throw it through and and blank the end and. Uh, and uh, re, uh, regroup, um, you know, I think the boys uh, should have a little chat after this end. Uh, there was a couple, couple of misses. Uh, yes. You know, they had their opportunities, and they let them slip away. So, uh, you know, let's uh, let's have a little chat, boys. Uh, let's get, uh, you know, get ourselves focused and uh, keep in mind what's at stake here. Uh, you know, we want to represent New Brunswick at the Canadian Briar. That's, that's our goal right now. Uh, that was interesting. They threw it with the uh, the intern. I was wondering, Wayne, when, when you have throw-throughs like this, uh, probably uh, you try to learn a little bit from it as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. You just don't, uh, you know, chuck it away. Uh, I mean, Pick uh, a spot in the ice that's green or... Uh, that, and that you haven't played, eh? Right. This is the third end, so... Uh, and that's exactly what he, he, he saw four or five outturn uh, yes. shots being uh, played on that on that side of the sheet but he hadn't seen an intern shot so that's right that's the why he elected to uh, to play that yeah and i noticed the sweepers stayed right with it you know they, they were watching it as carefully as uh, as the rock thrower and uh, paul dobson in the house all right so back to the same strategy uh first rock uh, jared uh, you know top four <clears throat> james puts up a corner guard Next shot is to guard the rock that's in the top four, and then uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if James uh, throws the uh, double uh, corner guard, or he throws the open uh, side uh, second guard. <clears throat> if this is a little heavy, uh, you know the next shot is pretty easy. Uh, so if this is behind the D line, this be this rock becomes James's friend. Yes. Corner guard with the intern. The first third of the game is over, and uh, you know, for three ends, and uh, Roach is up three to one. But uh, the last end was a blank, so uh, James and the Grattan team would probably be feeling somewhat better about it. Certainly, Roach would be, because uh, it looked like at one point there was an opportunity for Grattan to get two. Exactly. But uh, the hemorrhaging has stopped for the moment <laughs> for, the, for the Grattan team, so. Yeah. So here's the uh, here's the uh, second shot uh, called by Jason. Uh, and I noticed that uh, for corner guards, they've switched sides. Uh, that's up right. To, up so to this point, yeah. Something about that intern side, uh, James didn't like. Obviously, he missed that shot in the uh, in the second end. Right. So he's shying away from that now. Yeah. This shot here is, is is very, very critical that he does put that in the top eight foot. So they could have swept that probably a little bit more. So yeah. <clears throat> James elects to throw the uh, throw the hit. Uh, you know, again, their uh, option is uh, go around the corner guard. Yeah. Throw one top of, uh, you know, double corner guard or throw another guard on the other side. 
Right now, both teams strike me, Wayne, as being uh, somewhat cautious. Uh, I'm a, yeah, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little surprised <laughs> to tell you quite honestly. Yeah. Um, this is the fourth end, big end. Nice, big end. nice, nice, nice shot by Jamie. Absolutely nice shot by Jamie. Yeah. He, um, you know, he executed what he was asked to do. So, uh, um, you know, he can't, he can't uh, say anything, uh, anything more. I can't do anything more. He, no. uh, he, uh, he's playing well. He's playing really well. Yes. Now this hit and stick would be uh, an interesting place because uh, where that would be, that would kind of choke off some of the uh, possibilities as far as using the corner guard. More or less be a, a barrier right there. So now James has got an option. Draw the corner guard behind the corner, yep. He can even draw in behind that blue one. Towards the forefoot? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is a great call. I, I really like uh, this. This is what I would call personally. Uh, no question about it. Uh, you put up the corner guard for a reason. Let's use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're down too. Uh, and we've got the hammer. So uh, let's uh, you know let's play this smart and uh, no panic. Well, and and uh, earlier in the game, earlier in this game, uh, Andy demonstrated uh, that he has a pretty good feel for draw weight. No, that's a lot of finish here, Wayne. There's probably a little extra handle on that. <clears throat> and the reason why the guys are, are putting a lot of handle on the, on the rocks is because there's so much curl. Yes. And uh, if you throw a dead handle, um, you know, it's just going to warp, like, uh, like we'd like to say. Uh, and, uh, and you're going to miss more shots than you're going to make. So, um, but by putting more handle, you've got to be really careful because it's going to slide a little bit farther. Yes because it doesn't have any grab on it so uh, you got to be really uh, really strategic in your thinking uh, when you're throwing the rock corner guard's gone so does James split the house now he can split the house or he can throw the uh, the corner guard again or yes. he can throw one in behind the blue one the shot behind the blue one <coughs> could possibly bring a three into play. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and that's what he's thinking, right? Uh, yes. We've got an opportunity here. You know, we could play conservatively, draw the open side, go for a deuce. Or, man, oh, man, you know, I like yeah. this. I, I, I really like this call, too. Well, and again, he's got the right fellow doing it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Andy, Andy said uh, his draw weight uh, right from uh, the get-go. So yeah. uh, now it's just a matter of the boys uh, sweeping it to the, uh, you know, to the top of the forefoot. Just bite that forefoot. Got to go. Got to go, guys. Yep. Yeah, look at the finish there here in the last little bit. Excellent shot. Yeah, totally on the uh, left side of center. So what does Jason do? Right? He's tr he's going to try the straight back. There's no question. Um, or he can, draw, he can hit the open one. But now he'd be really putting three into play yes uh, James has forced his hand he's got to make the shot if he misses it three's back in uh, yeah. back in the game right so in last night's semifinal uh, team Roach was making shots like this on a regular basis throughout the game well I was watching it on live stream uh, traveling uh, back from Florida <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh, you're absolutely right it was pretty there you go that's a perfect shot yeah, very yeah. nice uh, Darren, Darren is just, just solid, solid, solid player. Um, he was partners with uh, Jennifer Armstrong, and uh, they won the uh, New Brunswick. Uh, oh yes, right. Uh, mixed doubles, um, and you know, going to nationals. Uh, so uh, he's got one a provincial championship under his belt uh, already this year, and uh, this uh, would be his second. <coughs> Now that blue that's just off the rings, or maybe it is slightly touching the rings, it's, it's partially covering the yellow. It's also partially covering the blue. So James is looking for a hit. What kind of weight is he throwing on He's got to be really, really careful here. He's he got to play this with soft weight. And the reason why you want to play with soft weight is that if you happen to hit the blue one a little high and it goes towards the yellow one, yes. if there's... If there's more weight, then you're going to bump your yellow one out of the rings, right? Yeah. You're trying to save that. Also, you can hit the top blue one, which is the guard. Yes. And roll. 
which is uh, what's happened. You see, so he had he had two or three options. Yes, he did on, with on because that. of because of the weight. Because of the weight. Because of the exactly. weight. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I can tell you, as a club curler sitting in the hack, uh, the fear you'd have, or I would have had, is that the blue would be jammed on that back yellow. Yeah. And, and as a result, probably would throw it that little bit wide and <laughs> do it. <laughs> Yeah, prophecy fulfilled. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, exactly right. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Guess what? You do it, right? Yeah. So, um, As my wife tells me, uh, if you, someone tells you don't be wide, what the last word you hear is wide, right? <laughs> so. Nice shot. That's a very nice shot. Yeah, Darren Darren's playing really well. And Blue's lying uh, two. Yep. So James has got a lot of room there. Uh, you know, folks, you're thinking that, oh, he's going to jam the blue one onto his yellow one. Uh, oh, no. The, the rings are so lively that uh, he can hit uh, seven-eighths of, uh, of that blue one on the low side, and it's still going to roll two or three feet. So uh, um, this is a uh, relatively, uh, you know, easy type shot uh, as long as it's thrown right. Good sweep here by uh, Jamie Brennan, uh, really putting. Uh, there you go. Yeah, just what you, uh, just what you uh, forecast, Wayne. Perfect, nicely done, and the, the separation is outstanding. The best you can hope for for Roach is hit that yellow and roll towards the other yellow one, but I don't yeah. think you'd be able to remove it, do you? No, and he has to be careful. You know, if you hit it too thin. Guess what? It jams on the blue one, gives James, you know, a shot yes. for three. Yes. I mean, it's a long shot, uh, but I mean, yeah. it's there. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, you know, he's going to be uh, he's going to be pretty positive with this. Uh, he won't be light. He's going to throw it probably a little little harder than uh, than uh, he wants. And, but that's just because that's the way to throw a shot. Yeah. And of course, if you play long enough you've had those negative things happen so that it's all back there in your memory it's, <laughs> it's trying to put that aside and just have positive thoughts as you throw this yeah and that's the uh, you know that, that's the job of the front end right the skippers get into the hack and uh, you know the last words he wants to hear you've got this yeah you've got this and uh, I love this plan yeah and like I thought he would do and it threw it a little heavier right yeah yeah there you go. And again, James will want to hit that, and if anything, roll a little bit towards the right. Yeah. yeah. Which you just demonstrated. It is interesting to watch James. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, this would be a straightforward shot, but he and, and Paul are very clear on what we're looking for here. Yep. And uh, it will be communicated to the guys now down at the hack. It's a it's a it's a good lesson for uh, younger curlers uh, starting out. Or people like myself, uh, club curlers, to, to notice that too. Because there's a lot of shots missed because I thought you were going to draw on this. or <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. because actually that's about the same ice you'd have if you wanted to freeze to that blue number three rock, right? That's and, right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, communication, uh, you know, curling is, uh, you know, it is a team sport. Right. Uh, every player on the team has, has a role, has uh, responsibilities. And, uh, you know, as long as those are clearly stated and known, um, you're going to win a lot of curling games. Yeah. Uh, and it's all about communication. Nicely done. Very Nicely nice. done. Nicely and thrown. Jamie was on that rock all the way, not necessarily sweeping hard, but keeping it clean for the first half of the journey. Exactly. In preparation for maybe catching a big curl. It's very flat now, uh, Wayne, isn't it, for any kind of double or nudge? Yeah, he'd have to throw this. He'd have to throw a, mis plus. a missile. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, howitzer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, who was the guy from Manitoba there who was in the Briar a couple of years ago? He could throw it. He could throw a oh, Gunlingson? six second hit. <laughs> yeah. Was that Jason Gunlingson? Uh, I yeah. think it was, yeah. 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 Just a little follow. Man, oh, man, he could throw it hard. That's the kind of shot you would need here to make the double. So, yeah. uh, you know, Jason um, just all he wants to do is give up, give up a, do a deuce, tied with the hammer, going into uh, the fifth end. And, um, and the uh, the deuce isn't a given. Even if he knows hits here, James has to make his shot. That's right. 
And absolutely. Um, you know, you hit the nail right on the head there, Andy. It's like you got to make the guy make a shot. Yeah. Right? That's that's what you want. You don't want to leave him an open draw. Right. I mean, these guys could draw the forefoot uh, with their eyes closed and throwing it backwards and throwing it left-handed. Um, so, yeah, you know, make them make a shot. And it, and he's done that because this is uh, the, the Blue Rock is number one. So, and uh, he's got to earn his point. He does. <coughs> he's going with the uh, the intern on this. Yeah. And if he happens to throw this a little heavy, guess what? You know, he hits the, uh, the shot rock. Well, he's got the catcher, but he also has the roll off the catcher. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know how it spins back? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, so he's got to be careful here. Uh, really, his option is uh, i got to hit this on the nose. Throw it nice and soft. Andy's right on this. Trying to make it curl. Might have been a little wide. Don't forget, he that's the shot he missed uh, two ends ago. Yes. Uh, so, but guess what? No mistake. Yeah. No mistake at Tie all. Tie game. Great shot. Yeah, as we enter the middle third of the game, James gets a two. Fourth end, so we got a tie game, but Roach has the hammer. Exactly, and uh, there we go. So good, good discussion there, James, and the boys are uh, you know are yeah. handling. They're they're talking about the next end. Uh, I don't see that happening with the uh, Roach team. No, uh, you know they should be huddling and uh, talking about the next end, and that's important. Uh, in, you know, uh, input to uh, to our junior curlers and whatever else. Yes. This little little caucus after the end is really, really good uh, to prepare yourself uh, for what's going to happen into yeah. the next end. So right now, James, he's told the guys, listen, we're going to need some guards. We have to force them to one. Yeah. This is our plan for, for end number five. Force them to one. Then we come back in six and score our deuce and we got the lead. Right. So uh, guess what? First rock is short. Then uh, Jason will have a choice of either putting up a corner guard, aggressive deuce, or drawing in behind the center line guard. But James doesn't mind him drawing behind the center line guard because it's his guard. He can always hit that rock back onto the opponent's uh, stone and uh, you know and, and, and lay and lay shot rock. So yeah. um, that's the kind of strategy that uh, that the boys are thinking about right now. James is ready for this end. I don't see that in the uh, Roach team right now. Okay. No, it's it's interesting. Curling is about communications. It truly is. It's even something as simple as what's board weight. That varies with teams. It's, That's right. Does, is it to the board or through the board or a bounce back from the board or whatever? And uh, I, I've never really had an answer given to that. Uh, what is board weight for you, Wayne? For me, it's uh, the rock hits the board and it bounces back a foot. A foot, okay. That's Yeah, well, that's, that's clear. Weight. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah. Because I've often wondered about that, Wayne, because if, you, uh, if you're asked for hack weight and then you're asked for board weight, it isn't that much more unless it does what you talk about, bounce back a foot, then it's that much difference. Because the difference between back line and hack is great, greater than between the hack and the back board. Exactly. So, and on our ice now, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, to boast the fact that we have the best ice in the province we have the best ice almost in the country because we come out well, we're going to come out tomorrow morning and play the Haggerty cup at yes. nine o'clock tomorrow morning and the first draw is going to be a 375 split yes and it's going to curl four and a half feet yes which curling club in this province or in this country right you know can say that and so back to your point about the weight itself what what that uh, when the ice is that fast Three feet extra speed makes it that much straighter. Right. Well, it means the curl occurs three feet later. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, you know, like we're, we're so lucky, uh, you know, back to, to Joe Mason, uh, you know, and his crew, um, you know, to have that kind of ice uh, that we can play on uh, day in, day out. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, Andrea Crawford's uh, team uh, who is going to uh, the Scotties. Scotties. Yes. Um, they were here this morning practicing because they know that this ice will be very similar to the ice that they're going to be playing on at the Scotties. Yes. So we can prepare now our teams much better. And that's why I think in the long run, our representation at national championships will be that much more competitive. 
Yes. Because they will know how to play on that kind yeah. of surface. The years that we had to function at the junction, the winners those years for both men's and women's did quite well nationally. Exactly. They, they didn't win, but they did quite well. Well, they, we're not going there, you know, being a two and nine or, yeah. or whatever else. Now we're competitive. We're seven and four. We're, uh, you know, we're eight and three or is even a six and five record is a really good record. Yes. Because <clears throat> you're playing against the top the pro, teams in the, the pros. Exactly. Yeah. Top teams in the world. Now, that, that was a miss by uh, Andy McCann, whether his weight looked fine, but uh, it caught the curl. Spencer Rowenny, he's throwing a lot of takeouts. Uh, let's see what his draw weight's like. So that last shot of Andy, that was just uh, unfortunate. Maybe a little tight, but man, oh man. There's so much curl, right? Yeah. So, um, well, here goes Spencer's. Uh, you know, this is warping. Like this is going sideways. And look at that ice. I mean, look at. Yeah. Nice shot by Spencer because he's been throwing a lot of takeouts <laughs> to this point. So Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So, what's James looking at? Tap it back a little bit, create a, a bit of a wall back there. Or there's uh, there's that yes that option. Um, I think he wants to leave the guard up. It's it's early in the end, right? Yes. So we're talking about uh, second 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 stone. Yeah. Um, so uh, a little tap here, uh, really really good shot. Difficult shot, no question about it. Uh, but um, I mean, if he makes this, uh, you know, he can. Uh, Get them, uh, get themselves in a really good situation. Would it would it be acceptable if this rock overcurled and moved the guard a little bit, or do you really want to avoid the guard? For I sure? think you want to avoid the guard okay. uh, because the guard's your friend. Uh, yes. You put it up there for a reason. Uh, uh, it's one of those situations where uh, nice it's sweeping. a shot that you got to make, and and he made it, it yeah. perfect, absolutely yeah. perfect. He's moved the blue rock from behind the guard. Jason's got to go behind the, the corner guard. Uh, James put that corner guard up there, uh, the center line guard up there, sorry, uh, in the first place uh, to generate uh, the play towards the center. Yeah, and, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, so that, that's what's going on right now. Just like a magnet, all the plays towards center. Nice, uh, very nice sweeping on that rock by uh, Jamie Brennan. Of, uh, of Andy McCann. Yeah. It really was. So here's another another great shot by Spence. Yes. Uh, you know, absolutely identical to the wow. first one he threw. No, no, that's so. How how that, precise is that, eh? Yeah, that's just <laughs> uh, what Darren Roach was saying. Is, is that second now is that you've got to have that uh, precision, that uh, soft weight ability in your in your quiver, as well as of course being able to throw takeouts. So I think here uh, the uh, situation, uh, so, you know, one rock later in the end. Uh, so James is uh, concerned uh, about giving up more than two. Uh, he doesn't mind giving up two uh, at this stage. Uh, so therefore he's going to try and attempt the uh, center line guard onto the rock that was over to the right. Um, unfortunately, Paul missed it. Um, Uncharacteristic uh, of of Paul missing a shot like that. He's such a great hitter. Um, you know, I've been watching him for years and uh, played against him for years. Yes, and, uh, he's just a little off today. Just just a smidge, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, but that's all it takes sometimes. It does. Sometimes you're better off to miss wildly as opposed to a little bit. So now Jason is looking at a three. Yeah, where, what do you think about the uh, his proposal to come behind the yellow guard? That's a good call. You know what another good call is? Tight guard on the t uh, rock that's on the top of the 8-foot. Okay. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the reason for that is that that guarantees you two. Okay. You make that guard on that top 8-foot. Uh, and we trade shots, we trade makes. Yes. Right? We score two. Okay. And and that's what he that's what he wants to do right now. So if you go behind the yellow guard, you're 
well, you're trying for the three, maybe. Well, you're trying for the three, but you're also going to leave, uh, you can leave uh, James with an opportunity to make a double takeout or a triple takeout. Yes. Right now, yes, you, started, you started the end, remember, thinking, all I want to do here is score two. Yes. Let's make sure we score our dues now. We, yes. we, we have that opportunity. Now they've looked at another option. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, Boy, there's a risk of rolling out. <laughs> but I, I'll guarantee you, James then hits the rock that's on the uh, center line, top eight, mm -hmm. rolls in behind the corner guard. Guess what? Those two blue ones yeah. are all, all of a sudden our uh, are second and third shot. Even if this hits and sticks, uh, the hit and roll would look good. Because... Uh, Trying to make a curl. No. I, I, I'm surprised at that myself, yeah. uh, that yeah. they went for that. And the other thing that, you know, when I'm coaching, when I'm coaching our, our girls and, uh, you know, Team Campbell and all that stuff. Yes. I'm always telling them, when you have an opportunity to put pressure on the other team. Yes. Throw the easiest shot and throw the draw. Yes. Because you're going to make more of those soft shots. Yes. Then you will the hard shots, like the, the, the heavy shots, like the takeouts. Yes. And um, and that was just one of those typical situations where it threw yeah. too much weight. Yeah. Right? You had a, you had a sh uh, shot delayed three. And you draw. Why, yeah. why, why are you hitting the third the third uh, scoring rock? Yeah. yeah. You're talking about pressure. There was no pressure added there. As a matter of fact, pressure was a little bit of pressure was removed with, with the run out. Hit. Nicely done. Oh, rolled a little, maybe. Uh, much. Just a little. Uh, good try, Paul. That was a good throw. Good throw. From the hack, that would not be fully uh, visible to you, so yeah. that, that would play on you. It's certainly ex accessible, but you'd have to believe that your uh, you'd have to believe your skips broom and the uh, wake call. I must say, I, I generally watch mates very carefully when I'm watching curling live or on TV because they are the MVPs of the of the event. Toughest job in the world. It uh, really is. You know, I played third for, <laughs> for a lot of years. Yes. You know, guys like Russ and, and whatever. And uh, so your job as third, uh, number one, is that you have to have all of the shots in yes. your arsenal. Yes. You've got to be a good draw man, good hitter, good back weight player, and so on and so forth. Secondly, you got to be a really good leader because, although the skip is the, you know, he's the the yeah. the, 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 the the team guy, because he's got to make the last shot. The real leader in the team is the third because, you got to communicate yeah with the front end, to the skip. You got to keep the skip happy. You yeah. got to keep him in, in in a good state of mind, and and you also have to keep your front end in the game. Yes. <laughs> So a really, really tough job. And if you look over the course of a game, more difficult shots are made by the mate than the skip. The skip has to make them under pressure, and that's why they're memorable. But a lot of cases, uh, you wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for your mate's play. There's uh, And there's no question. Look at all the great teams today. Uh, uh, you know, teams that have been very successful with a guy like Mark Kennedy playing third. Mark fourth. Kennedy. What well, a okay. difference he's made the Jacobs team. They're you know, they're re revived. They're team Team Martin. Yes. Team Cooey, and now Team Jacobs. Yes. And uh, you know, uh, Mark Kennedy uh, to me uh, would be the number one third in the world. Yes. No question. And a nice guy to boot. Well, to yes, yeah. Wiki. You know, he was here, uh, and uh, we had him, uh, you know, a couple of years ago for uh, for one of our youth development camps, and uh, and what he taught uh, the kids and and the experience that the you know the kids uh, got out of uh, him being here, and the stories that he was telling us, and uh, all mm -hmm. of his uh, accomplishments and all that stuff, and uh, and able to communicate that. Uh, yeah. So and and back to you know, great communicator, good leader. Uh, he demonstrated that uh, off the ice as well. Um, just, just a great player. Oh, I think this might be a little light. Well, more than a little, Wayne. That's six feet light. Gracious. 
Now the fellows didn't really jump it that hard, so is that a case of going over uh, fresh ice or fresh pebble or? Back to the release, uh, Andy. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, because of the ice uh, being uh, so aggressive, I call it aggressive because it's, there's a lot of curl. Yeah. And if you don't release that rock positively, even a little wide, um, for it to, to, to glide, if you're if you're slightly um, yes. light or, or, or lazy, I call it a lazy handle. Yeah. It's going to warp like that, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be short every time. <clears throat> the reason I ask is that uh, both Jamie Brennan and Andy McCann were doing a fair bit of clean uh, polishing or checking there just beyond the Jake uh, Thomas uh, logo. It might have caught a little bit of debris too. <clears throat> Who knows? But uh, I don't know. I was looking at his release and I thought it was yes. a little soft. Well, and of course, I think you, you get those picks and those funny things because of the release, right? Because you were talking earlier, if you have a lot of spin, the gyro effect or whatever, <coughs> and it, it doesn't happen. Well, that certainly turned his end around. Turned the end around. Now they're forcing uh, Jason to uh, to a single point, And, uh, you know, he's drawn against two. And uh, he, one mistake here, uh, he just missed a draw. So uh, Exactly. So he's going to have a bad memory at this point <laughs> in terms of not letting that last rock affect him. So there's, uh, you know, a job at the front end, right? It's uh, to let the skipper know, uh, you know, what he threw. And, yeah. uh, and just uh, reinforcing the fact that uh, you can make the shot. So uh, throw, you know, throw that 380 split and, uh, you know, we'll have the, uh, we'll have the rock in the uh, four foot. Yeah, they're doing a lot of kind of playing around with the ice. It's, it's not really a calming situation for him. You mentioned before the end started that... Uh, the team hadn't really had a huddle or nope. discussion. Nope, exactly. This has got a lot of weight. I don't know why they're yet. They want to lay off of it a bit. Yeah, it hasn't. The telltale is when it starts to curl. There, it's starting now, but. Might be a little heavy. Andy, Paul Dobson's on it. <clears throat> no, he made it. Oh, that's good. Good yeah. shot. Good shot, Jason. Well, under pressure, certainly, considering the circumstances. So we are now in the fifth end break. With uh, Roach up four to three. That's when I would say, you know, time for the boys to, uh, you know, <clears throat> take a little bit of a rest, uh, talk about, uh, you know, what has happened in the first five ends. Uh, What's the strategy going forward, uh, you know, for the next five? Um, <clears throat> and uh, just to really, you know, uh, keep uh, keep everything uh, positive uh, is, is the main thing. Certainly in the thir first third of the game, uh, it was Dobson, uh, or sorry, Do Dobson, uh, Roach, uh, demonstrating leadership. Uh, you know, they were leading three to one. But since then, uh, James Gratton has taken a two in the fourth end and forced a single in the fifth. So uh, to this point, uh, the middle third of the game is uh, going uh, Grant's way. But both teams would have to feel quite good uh, about their situation. I mean, uh, James Gratton is a multi-time uh, winner of the uh, New Brunswick uh, Tankard, gone to numerous briars, and here you are leading at 4-3. So uh, the team has to feel good. They know that there's improvements that they can make, but uh, the same thing would be said by the uh, the grad group as well. Yeah, exactly. G yeah. Generally, what is done uh, at this point, Wayne? You got five minutes. Uh, in your experience, is there much of a discussion, uh, or do you kind of leave uh, your skip alone and let him puzzle things through? Or what or we normally uh, would do is that uh, we'd let the uh, skip uh, lead lead the situation okay right? yes um you know both both the uh, skips right now are, are playing are playing reasonably well yes you know they've missed a shot or two uh and uh so again they're uh, you know being being the third man um my comment would only be to uh to the skip is like so what do you feel you know how do you feel yeah um you know i, I would reinforce you know the the uh, the ice yes the weight um, you know, 
there's a couple of spots on the on the sheet that might be a little straighter than others yes. or curling more than others. Uh, but everything would, would be uh, absolutely positive. All okay. positive feedback to him and then let him come back and say, well, I've, you know, I've heard, I've heard Russ, you know, he's a, geez, you know, I'm struggling with draw weight, you know, okay. what's, what's going on? Like, uh, you know, why? And yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we would say, well, you know what, uh, you know, you're thinking you're throwing this, but you're actually throwing that. Yes. And, and just leave it very, very uh, high level. And yeah. Not, not, you, you can't get into too much detail because then things start playing, playing in your mind. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's all about uh, keeping, uh, uh, keeping things positive. Yes. So, so the feedback is just, nope, just think about this, think about that. Um, even, uh, you know, we've referred uh, back to, uh, remember game four against uh, yes. Ryan Kane on uh, Thursday afternoon. You know, you, you, were, you were doing the same thing. And yeah. then, you know, all of a sudden you came back. So you try and, and get them into that state of mind about thinking other situations yeah. um, that they were in previously. Yes. And, but always referring to the same event. Yes. You don't go back to, you know, remember we, were, we played the final in... Uh, 2006. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so back to, back to the, uh, the, the same event, same ice, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so you got you, you, you to be really um, uh, uh, strategic, I guess, uh, on how you do it. Uh, and, and you'd have to know the, the person as well, I guess. You know, Absolutely. like, like, like you, you, would, you knew Russ... If if I were to do it, it'd be just a complete feeling out process. I might say the wrong thing. You you knew the person well enough. I mean, you and James have curled together, so you would probably have a pretty good idea what to say to Wayne yeah. or uh, James right now if he was struggling and he's not. But if he was, that's right, exactly. And I roomed with Russ too, right? So okay, we, yes. uh, yeah, we shared uh, you know on the road and uh, and all that stuff. So and uh, you know the consummate uh, professional curler. Um, that's all we talked about. Yes. We okay. didn't talk about anything else. Okay. I mean, right up till uh, closing your eyes and falling asleep, it was curling, curling, Cur curling, yeah. curling, curling, and and that's why um, I got to know him so so, so closely. And, and you know, we were able to. I mean, we lost yeah. a Briar final. Like man, right. oh man, we could have won that. And uh, yes. you know, we we, we would have been the first uh, New Brunswick I team know. to ever win the Briar. And uh, and you know what an experience. Um, yeah. And just playing with him, then I went back to a couple of senior national championships, and we lost a couple of senior national yes. finals too. Um, you know, and not not because um, you know we weren't playing well. I mean, we just happened to hit teams that were playing on fire. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, Greg McCauley shot ninety eight percent in that Briar final. Yeah. Uh, Eugene Ritzik uh, against us in the senior final shot ninety four. Wow. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. What can you do? Just <laughs> tip you your hat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you expect to see much change in strategy, uh, Wayne? Because I, I noticed for, through the first five ends, there really wasn't any more than about four or five rocks in play at any one time, which surprised me a little bit. Exactly. Uh, I anticipate you're going to see a, l a, a lot more rocks in play now. Yeah. Um, we had one game, uh, I, I think it might have been with Roach. Roach and Kane, I think there were 16 rocks in play one end and 14 in another. It, it, it was just... <laughs> Perfect. It was just like a fire sale, you know. And that's what everybody wants to watch, right? Yeah. Like it's, uh, there we go. So, uh, you know, rocking the top of the 12 foot, <clears throat> actually, um, that's a semi miss, you know, and, and at yeah. this level. Yes. Because James can use that top, uh, that rock on the top of the 12 foot and draw in behind it yes. and be full four. So uh, he knows that, and uh, so he's going to put up the corner guard. Yeah, really good call. Yeah. And Jamie's been throwing those very well today. All right. We are now uh, second roach stone. In this case, do you think it's the, I didn't notice, uh, do you think it's the guard or is he drawing behind? Well, he could uh, He could draw. Use his top 12 one as a. The guard. No, it's a guard, I think. Yeah. Um, or my choice would have been to bump that uh, blue one up to the forefoot. Okay. <coughs> uh, I think that's what he was trying to attempt. Uh, and... Uh, so he's come up a little bit short. 
but it's in the free guard zone, uh, so that's right. It can't be removed, even as part of a double. You could jam it, but you couldn't uh, make the double on that. That's right. So Jamie Brennan, the, the call here yeah, has to go to behind the go behind the corner guard. It's hanging a bit. But as it dies, it should pick up the curl and start going hard. Yeah. Andy McCann is uh, putting a little directional sweeping on it. Yeah, that's fully buried. As a matter of fact, it almost <laughs> popped out a little bit on the other side, but from the hack, you wouldn't see that. Yeah, very good throw. And uh, here's a, an opportunity here to... Uh, for Spencer to come down and, and freeze. So that draw, although it's behind the corner guard, a little deep. A little deep, yeah. And, um, and uh, gives the other team an opportunity to freeze on top of it and uh, reduce, reduce the scoring area and force the other team to a single point. Yeah, and Spencer could be number one if he freezes. Sometimes you get into the curvature there and uh, you can over curl and not be number one. Oh, might happen here. No, Spencer fine. just a little heavy. A little <coughs> heavy because it's, it's open. So James has, he can make the triple. He's looking at the triple. Is he, yeah. Yeah, you hit that blue one on the nose. So what James is doing right now is that he's he's following his uh, thought process when he first started the end. He's trying to score two. Yes. Right. People would think, oh, geez, you know, you're laying second. Why don't you hit the shot rock and roll in behind and you, you could possibly score three. Guess what? The rocks are behind the T line. You're yes. not You're not going to score three. Right. So... Make it as easy as you can to score the two. This is the right shot. Although he didn't make the triple. Yeah. Shot st stone is behind the uh, and he's line. And he's opened up the center line. Right. Right. So if he does happen to get into trouble. Yeah. The center line is open. The forefoot is open. He, he can draw the forefoot and score a single point. Yeah. And so that's the other thought process. Let's make sure that I have a shot to score one with my last shot if we get ourselves into trouble earlier on. In right. The and with that in mind, you probably agree with Jason's takeout call here? Absolutely. Um, two, two. He's, because that rock is second, second shot. Second shot. But by rolling out, though, now, yes. again, you know, opportunity for a deuce for James is, is in play. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the, the hit and stick would have been very useful for Roach, but that uh, didn't happen. So James has got, uh, yeah, there's, there's, like, there, there's four shots here you can call, yeah. uh, right? And, um, and so what he's thinking right now, again, there is that I want to make sure that I can score my one with my last rock. So I'm going to hit the rock that's in the forefoot. Right. Try and roll in behind staggered guards, like yes. the yellow blue one. Yes. And I can still generate a deuce that way. Um, although the rock would be behind the tee line, easier shot for the roach team to uh, come down and uh, draw to it. No roll. But he hit it on the nose. So... Um, you know, that's, that's a half miss, right? Yes, it uh, is, yeah. <clears throat> because it's still partially behind the uh, T-line. Open. Incidentally, if people are wondering, uh, these teams have met uh, five times in the past. And the record uh, is Stratton 3 and Roach 2. Uh, this year, uh, Roach has met uh, Grattan once, and uh, which was at this tankard here in <coughs> Fredericton, and they won. So uh, they're 1-0 and this year versus Grattan. So uh, a, a good matchup, a close matchup. It's funny how some teams have other teams' number. Uh, I think uh, James told me one time that uh, you know his record against uh, Glenn Howard was was very good. Mm -hmm. it, it was just it's just a team he he did very well against. So so there are matchups like that. Exactly. Um, 
Didn't play Jeff Stoughton many times, but um, <clears throat> we always had a good record against uh, Jeff Stoughton. Uh, yes. So when I played with Russ, but then again, uh, when I played with James, uh, we played uh, Jeff in the uh, round robin at the 2006 Briar in uh, Regina and uh, popped a five ender on him in the seventh end. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and, and beat him. And uh, so uh, yeah. you're right, you know, like... Um, I don't know what it is. It's styles the, of play, maybe? Uh, styles of play or your confidence is the, you know, yes. that, that much uh, higher and uh, um, or just luck. Yes. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, against certain teams, uh, and it's like any sport. Uh, yes. Curling is, is, is one of those that um, you need a little bit of luck. If you don't have luck, you're not going to win a whole lot. No, no. Yeah, it, <clears throat> good luck comes to those who are prepared though and that gets back to the communications you know having your sweepers follow the rock all the way down just in case there is a pick or the old saying hey, you got to be uh good to be lucky and you got to be lucky to be good you, so you uh, <laughs> nice rock there it bounced well, little, off little yeah open, yeah, little yeah it's open accessible point. isn't it mm -hmm. so yeah. james has got a choice here he could Roll over to the left, or try and roll in behind the corner guard. And I think that's a, that's the right shot is to roll in behind the corner guard. He doesn't leave a double or right. You know anything. anything yeah, if you like roll, that. yeah, if you roll left, there's a double or a pocket, one or the other. So I just got the stats here uh, about the teams. Uh, you know, after five ends, uh, James's team uh, is curling 78 uh, percent, and uh, Jason's team is curling 82 percent. So a really tight match. Uh, yes. You know, the boys are making, uh, you know, eight shots out of ten, uh, and on uh, you know on really uh, aggressive ice surface with uh, really aggressive stones. I mean, those stones are uh, th three years old. Andy, you remember? Yes. Uh, you know, we bought those uh, from uh, Canada Curling Stone, uh, and uh, you know considered. Uh, you know the best stones uh, in uh, you know in the world. Uh, yes. The, uh, great company, great great Canadian company. Uh, Excellent shot by out of uh, Ontario. Paul so. Dobson there. Yes. Yeah, it, and you can have confidence in the stones too. Uh, I haven't really seen uh, the fellows try to pair rocks off, and I haven't really heard very much if people have been uh, altering the the normal order of rocks. You know. Generally in club play, uh, the lead throws rocks one and two, second three and four, and so on. But uh, sometimes if you have mismatched rocks, you'll discover that the skip is throwing rocks one and two, and uh, the lead is throwing rocks seven and eight. Yeah, and sometimes it's um, uh, it's the confidence. Yeah, it's in right? your head. Yeah. It's in your head, right? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, played with a lot of guys, never throw seven and eight. I really? Sk Just skips. Yeah. Don't want seven and eight. Find me two stones on this sheet <laughs> other than seven and eight. <laughs> really? Is, that sounds more like a superstition. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that as well. Yeah. Uh, could be, but uh, yeah, just. Uh, wow. Yeah. Not interesting. Mm -hmm. This is a nice looking shot. If it doesn't bounce too far, uh, it did. Just a little heavy. This end is getting close to ugly for uh, Team Roach. Well, obviously, you know James's team is, uh, you know, has kept the pressure on. Uh, yes. The, the, throughout this whole end, uh, uh, they have not missed a shot. Um, you know, they've executed everything as as per uh, as per the playbook, and uh, and uh, guess what? Uh, you know, we have an opportunity to uh, to score three and uh, take a two point lead after six ends, uh, which would be huge. It would be. Uh, uh. You know, with four ends to go, split hammers. Um, you know, I like uh, I'd like James's opportunity. Uh, you know, if if that was the case after this end is over. Now with this shot, he probably wants to roll to the left, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're creating a nest. But then uh, Jason's got the double takeout uh, with the intern. Yes, he does. So you know, uh, James is pretty much guaranteed two here, I think. Right. Um, unless uh, you know something really bad happens but I, I don't see that he's throwing it he's throwing it really really well uh, good balance delivery yeah. uh, you know good focus uh, and Jamie's you know, in position there right on top of good it. sweepers not okay. much of a roll so there's a triple there there is difficult di difficult triple but you know what his best shot would be the hit and roll and freeze yeah and then that would force James that. 
force James to one. Um, Choice of handle here. Do you like that? He, I would. I would be tempted to throw the other handle in. I would too. It's, it's, it's a guard. flatter. It's a flatter roll. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's a roll that has. Uh, it will have less spin right. coming off. Yes. Because this intern here will hit the the yellow one and then have a, a tendency to spin up. Spin up. <clears throat> it also brings that guard a little bit into your eyesight too as you're throwing. Exactly. But, the, but the, you also you also play as you know. You yeah. play to your strengths, right? Yes. Am I an intern uh, thrower or am I an outturn right. thrower? So which uh, which turn do I prefer? Um, well, this oh, is he's throwing this really, really hard. But looks like he's got an opportunity. Oh, he just got by the guard. Gracious, nice shot. There you go. Yeah, very nice shot. Can you so come... That, that hit and roll was was a shot. Um, so now he's made it he's made it very difficult for for James to score his two. But the right. two's there, <clears throat> and he can play both sides. That's what uh, he's asking Jamie uh, down at the other end. You know, yeah. uh, which side uh, do I see more more of the blue stone? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think he sees the blue at all from uh, the center line, from the outturn side. So he's thrown this shot a couple of times. Uh, he threw it in the second end. Remember, he missed that one, but then yes. he threw it again in the fourth and made it. So um, he's got he's got a really good um, a really good idea of what the ice is doing. Uh, so hopefully uh, he keeps uh, the positive shot in mind that he made in the fourth end. Um, you know, and that that would be uh, you know Paul's job to uh, to remind him of that. He's moved the broom a good six inches uh, out. So I think he's just, what he's tr throwing here is that he's just throwing like back line weight, very soft, just enough to bump the blue one uh, to the back 12 or even just out of the rings. Yeah, the sweepers might want to take some deep breaths here because... Uh this is a precision shot. They're off and on, they're waiting. They're waiting for the curl here. Jamie's been asked to put... Uh Directional sweeping to make it curl. I don't think it's. Oh, there. No, sir. Oh, what we have here is a steal. Steal of one. Steal of one. A terrific shot by uh, Roach with his last rock. He uh, first of all he just skittered by the the guard wing. Not yep. by much at all. Not by much at all, and uh, you then know. he got the hit and the perfect side side freeze to. Uh, Exactly. Through James. James took more ice in the hack. It's uh So guess what happened there, Andy? He remembered the shot that he missed. Yes, not the one he made. He missed it tight, right? Yeah. And he wrecked on the guard. Yeah. Or he hit his rock. So he asked for more ice. Right. So he was thinking about the wrong shot yeah. that he made. Yeah. Right? That he that he had attempted to previously. Right. So, so, so these, these are the kinds of things that, um, you know, Good teams talk about, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, take take your time. Right? Like there's there's a lot of time left on the clock, uh, so it's not like you're rushed for um, for time itself. Uh, so just just prepare yourself a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I'm always nervous when 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 a skip goes all the way down to the hack and asks for more ice or a different shot. It seems to me that they should come down and talk with the mate, especially if you got time. And, and just kind of reset. He he asked for a good six inches more ice on that. He threw it well. And he missed it by six inches. And he missed it by six inches. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and like you say, uh, we all we all have those uh, bits of scar tissue in our back uh, <laughs> history. Yeah. And and he was remembering the scar tissue, not the not the laurels, not the successful shot. Anyway. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, but no uh, question. Give uh, Jason Roach a lot of credit, though. That was a pressure shot he threw because it really was looking like a three or four. That's right. That was a four-point swing. It was. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. guys that can throw those uh, pressure shots, uh, that's the reason why he's skipping, obviously. Yes. And, uh, 
And I understand he's a he's a good golfer. He and his brother both. Yeah, they're uh, yeah they're provincial uh, golf team uh, members uh, and uh, very very successful at uh, at golf itself. Which is another sport where you got to forget bad shots. Uh. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And deliver under pressure. So uh, we've seen a, a tight guard here from. Uh, yeah, that might have right. might, might have slid a little, little too tight, uh, yeah. but nevertheless, it, it is there. Uh, Jared missed the first one; he threw it through. Um, but guess what? You're playing the seventh, then you're up uh, two. Uh, the last thing you want to do is throw a guard, right? And uh, so that's what was going through Jared's mind, and uh, so he overthrew it, uh, you know, slightly. Um, and then, th because James put up the corner guard. Um, then Jason's got to go to the offense and throw the center line guard. Right. Now James is down two points, uh, playing the seventh end. So now he's going to play the double corners. So corner guards on either side, and uh, he'll have uh, he'll have at least two, maybe even three stones to hide some of his uh, his stones behind. Right. He uh, he really. You know, he desperately needs a deuce right now. He's, he's got a score, too, in this yes, game. Yes, he does, yeah. Because it is late in the game. It is late. And uh, Jason's just going to keep the pressure on him. So, uh, you know, put up the uh, center line guard, draw in behind now, shrink the rings, draw the uh, the attention to to less ice, uh, you know, the center, center yeah. of the sheet. More precision. And more precision, absolutely. And uh, so that's uh, that's the strategy. And uh, if they can execute that uh, really well, uh, you know, they can force. Uh, what they're trying to do right now is try to force James into scoring just a single point. Right. So that they have the hammer going into eight even ends, uh, being one up. Yeah, Spencer Mawinney goes a bit deep. Just a little the deep. The line was good, but uh, it's at the back, which... Which is not a bad thing as far as James is concerned. No, any rock behind the tee line, uh, no matter what color it is, uh, are uh, James's friend. Yeah, it's in a little barricade back there for him. To... But it's had the effect of uh, drawing James's uh, play towards the center, though, Wayne. Yeah, so he, he obviously, you know, he had uh, an option here to draw behind the corner guard right. or draw behind the center. I think what he's trying to do is that he's trying to, to put his rock behind the blue one, yes. get Jason to attempt the straight back takeout. Yes. Hopefully he misses because James needs a couple of misses here. He does. And that's the miss that he needs. And then he opens up the center. And then he's got the two corner guards to work with. Plus he's got the center of the sheet open so that if he gets himself into trouble again, he can draw the forefoot for a single point. Right. So that's, what's, um, that's what he's thinking about right now. And now, Jason's not biting. The rock's a little deep, right? So yes. if, the, if that rock was top eight, top Jason's eight. playing the blue onto All the All day, yeah. But now that it's a little deep, he's thrown the draw shot, corner freeze. Guess what? James James has no shot for two. Yeah. I'll give him one all day. And that's, yes. the, and that's what Jason is thinking. I'll give him one all day. I'm one up playing eight with yes. a hammer. That's what I want to be. If I scripted this game before the, yes. before we started, yes. that's exactly what I would want. Yeah. There you go. Bingo. So does James come down again? Maybe through the other side, the outturn side? That or he can hit the blue guard, center line guard on the nose, make the double. Right. <coughs> or he can throw that shot. Yeah, that's the one I was wondering See, about. He still has those two corner guards that yes. he can work with, right? He can he can he can attempt uh, angle raises right. to that. They're really difficult shots. He really doesn't want to have to throw that shot, but he's still thinking about the fact that yes, I still have those opportunities to get myself yeah. uh, out of trouble or even to score multiple points. It's true. They, the, those yeah. yellow guards, especially as close as they are to the rings, are. Or more than just guards, there are also things he can raise. Now, Andy McCann's had good weight all game, but boy, this looks like it's going early. Sweeping hard. Gotta go. They're working this one hard. Oh my God. Look at the boys. 
Oh, great sweep. Yeah. Wow. Great throw, too, actually, because he threw it to the sweepers. He I mean, threw it, it to the sweepers. Yeah. He knew that, you know, the worst thing that I could do here is throw it heavy. Yeah. Right? So guess what, boys? You're in the game. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Paul Dobson, uh, you know, Jamie swept it really hard too. But Paul swept that uh, last four feet uh, like there was no tomorrow. So yeah. uh, we the boys are in the game; they're committed, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, and we do have a defibrillator in the club. So <laughs> 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 after sweepers like that, uh, yeah. <clears throat> but now we're starting to get into quite a little cluster of rocks there uh, around the yeah. four foot top top eight. So how quickly the end changes, right? So yeah. shot for shot, and uh, so now Jason is uh, is throwing the guard, um, and James will always have that right corner guard yes. angle into the yellow onto the blue, and score uh, score multiple points. Not an easy shot, but it's still there. Right. Um, Trying to overlap the blues, isn't he? Yeah, and uh, so he didn't do that. No. So James could attempt that uh, corner guard shot, but it's still too early in the end because yeah. it's, it's Paul's first shot, so his third. Does he make a play on those blue uh, guards? I, 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 like, I like the fact that, you see, he's, he's thinking about it. Yeah. Right? But that's, you keep that for later. So to me, you hit that, that, rock, that blue rock to the right. Yes. Try and hit it back onto the yellow, onto the blue. Okay. That's what he's looking at right now. And he opens up that side. If he misses it, he yeah. still opens up that side. And then Jason has got to make uh, make a decision: do I do I guard it again, or yes. do I hit the yellow one? It's interesting how James discusses all the options with the team. Uh, some skips right. more or less make the decision, put the broom down, and and expect you to. Uh, to hit the broom okay, with the right so, way. So what he's doing now is that he's he's attempting the double the double blue takeout. Okay, on the front. Yeah. Hit and it. which is another option. Uh, if he hits it thin, uh, he could hit uh, blue, kiss off the blue on the left, onto the yellow, onto the blue. Yes. <laughs> um, I'd like to have a telestrator to show uh, yes, to exactly. show our viewers, you know, what I'm thinking about. But uh, you know that that shot is certainly there. And. Uh, you know, a guy with uh, Paul's uh, hitting ability uh, is makeable. Oh, he okay. just missed it. Yeah, he did. He peeled off his own. Who's number one right now, Wayne, do you think? Blue? It looks like blue. The top blue? Yeah. The one's closest to us? Yes. That's what Jason is uh, calling. Yeah, he's uh, indicating to us that uh, he shot rock, so... The option for him is to uh, is to throw the guard, but you know what? You know, I'd be tempted to uh, try and come through the port. Blue onto yellow. Blue onto yellow, but just like with backline weight. Okay. And then roll my shooter in behind the centerline guard, and I think that's probably what he's trying. I'm not quite sure um, because he didn't he didn't really indicate uh, yeah, what he was. It attempting. looks like the ice for it, doesn't it? That, that yeah. would that would happen. See that weight? He's, that weight is close. Yeah, his brother uh, Darren throwing the rock. The fellows are just now. Now they're bearing down. Yeah, so that's the shot he's trying. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's that's exactly what I thought. There we go. Now James is going to be in big trouble. Yeah. You know, probably the rock that's causing James the most grief right now is his own yellow on the back forefoot. If that wasn't there, you could throw weight all day at that, couldn't you? We've been talking about that all game, right? Rocks behind the uh, T line is yeah. to uh, you know to the opposition's uh, advantage, and uh, and that's exactly uh, what's happening here. Uh, we see it. So for James right now, he uh, you know he really has to make sure that he scores one point. So yes. The. Uh, the forefoot obviously is not accessible to him right now. Okay. And if this is this is a really tough shot, um, so what he's attempting here now is to raise the yellow one back onto the two blue ones uh, and make a double takeout and leave his Yellowstone shot. But even if he makes the shot, the yellow one will be uh, will be accessible. 
beauty. It certainly improved matters. Oh, that is that is an exceptionally good, folks. You have no idea how difficult that was, unfortunately. and how well he executed that. And and I think he's lean too. Yes, he is. But unfortunately, there's one rock that's wide open. Now I don't know if it'd be for a double. I don't know how flat that is, but there's a chance for a hit and roll here. Then. Yeah, I think that's what he's just trying to do, just trying to hit and roll in behind the um, the yeah. centerline guard. And um, But Paul Dobson, for the moment, has bailed out his uh, teammates for sure. Yeah, that was like, uh, I mean, if, uh, if Paul was throwing the last shot, that would have been checkmate, right? <laughs> yes. So, um, really great shot. Wow, yeah, the lie two after that. It did it clean. It didn't move the yellow uh, shot rock at all. I heard a woe. So it might have been a little wide. <clears throat> little wide. Yeah, they're trying to use directional sweeping. It's a nose hit. No, it's not even that. It yeah. rolled away. Well, James. So because because of that great shot by Paul. Guess yes. what? Three's in play. Yes. Three is in play. Yeah, you put that. You Christmas tree it like you mentioned earlier yes. on, right? And uh, and then you're guaranteed two for sure. Yeah. Uh, one slight mistake by uh, Jason, and you're scoring three. Yeah. And uh, wow, you're up one. Three shots ago, James Gratton, I'll guarantee you, was thinking, "How am I going to score one point?" Score one. Now he has an opportunity for multiple. Yeah. Big pressure shot here. Yep. Um, so the boys, uh, yeah, so they're talking there. And yeah. he's talking. Jam Jamie's talking, yeah. Has the ice changed much? Is there, what's it like out there? They're, uh, yeah. Just, it's all about confirming what the skip is thinking. Yes. Right? Put a positive thought in his mind. James Gratton yeah. has thrown this shot a million times. But guess what? You still have to confirm yeah. that that's the right weight to throw. Looks uh, perhaps heavy, no? It's sliding pretty good. It it's really not is. curling. It's not curling for some reason. They probably want to take it deep. There's a double. Otherwise, well, oh, that's not a good result. Unfortunately not. No, that's... Uh, that's a pocket. That's, uh, that's a foot too heavy. Yeah. With so that ice, I say the call is what, for the double? Yeah, double takeout. Um, July 3. July 3, exactly. Wow. <laughs> what? What? In the last three shots, what a twist and turns here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it doesn't take much, um, really. Um, you know, so close and yet so far. Yeah. Um, you know, like I say, uh, one foot shorter. Um, James is guaranteed two. Maybe maybe a chance for three. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, he's going to be, again, fighting for his one. And this is something Jason Roach has demonstrated that he can do very well, is throw... Uh, throw the high hard one. Yes. Uh-oh. Another twist and turn here. So James is line one. Uh, so is he? he? Okay, yeah, yeah. He definitely has a shot for two. Don't think he can throw the same draw, or maybe he can. I guess he is. Yeah. Okay. So um, you know he could have played the uh, he he can play the intern hit on the uh, blue one, or he can throw exactly the same shot he just threw and uh, scores two, but he has to bite the button. Yeah, he does. I'm He's got about uh, two square inches of real estate to throw to, folks. This is how difficult the shot is. There's no play on the blue. There is a play on the blue. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's just thrown this shot. He so has. he feels confident that, uh, you know, that's the shot I want to throw. 146 feet uh, to uh, two square inches. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's what he's uh, trying to attempt. This is lighter than the first one was, for sure. 
They're sweeping it pretty good. Come on, boys. Yeah. A little hotter. There's a finish. But is it enough finish? Oh, boy. No, just the one. I think they were sweeping it uh, to directionally uh, sweep yeah. it to make it curl. Yeah. And uh, so, unfortunately, it didn't curl enough. It might have been just a smidgen heavier, so the score won. Three quarters of the way through the end, he'd be happy with this result, but the way it finished, uh, he's disappointed, I'm sure. Exactly, yeah. Jason Roach wouldn't be too happy. That last rock of his wasn't really that great a throw. Considering how well he's thrown them yep. today, uh, earlier. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, nervousness. Uh, he, I, I just think he just overthrew it a bit. Yeah, I know. think that's what it was. It didn't look like a bad throw. It's not like he had a bad release or, or looked yeah. like he was a yard wide. I think he, you're right. It was just a lot more weight than... And it's so, you know, so easily done on, on ice that's, you know, running four-second splits and... Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that fast. So, uh, and, I mean, what's on the line? The line is the a uh, provincial championship. Provincial to champion, to the, yeah. To make it to the national. So, here we are in the eighth, and we're into the final third of the game. Eight, nine, ten. And uh, the middle was more or less a split between the two fellows. So now you're going to see uh, a pretty aggressive uh, Grattan team. Uh, yeah. He's down one. Uh, three ends to go. Um, Jason Roach has got two hammers to one, right? Yes. Uh, so, uh, so that's the uh, you know when uh, you know when you're curling and uh, you're uh, you're strategizing, you're playing the scoreboard. Yeah. And uh, so that's what Jason is thinking right now. Uh, I'm up one, and I've got two hammers to one. Uh, so, you know, I like my chances. Uh, so, uh, again. It's all about execution um, and uh, staying focused. Just keep playing the way they've been playing. His response to the center line guard is to go for the top four foot. I asked you uh, as we uh, started the sixth end after the break whether there'd be more rocks in play. And certainly there were the last couple ends, and uh, probably there will be here as well. Yeah, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see some really really good curling here, guys, and uh, it's uh, there's gonna be a lot of come around shots, really soft weight shots, um, and that and that's because of the five rock rule. So these two yellow stones are in the free guard zone. The free guard zone starts from the T line, uh, not including the house, out to the hog line. So the opposition cannot remove uh, those stones from play, and um, and so therefore, uh, that's why you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of really soft shots and a lot of rocks in play. Right. Yeah. The the the, the first time you can attempt to remove a, a front guard is is with the six rock. Exactly. And by then, an awful lot will be set up for sure. Those two yellows are a bit close together. And they're staggered now, so yeah. uh, that could that could work to James's advantage or his disadvantage because if the roach team makes their shots perfect then he has to hit his guards on an angle to raise them back onto the rocks that are in the uh, in the house and if you're hitting them on the angle that means your shooter rolls even further to the side and uh, and then you're opening up the uh, the center sheet right yes. so so now james uh, so J jared just made a beautiful shot yes you, you cannot ask for a better shot than that right in behind the staggered guards top four foot on the center line uh, James's scoring opportunity now is reduced to a foot and a half, yeah. two feet. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, pressure's on the front end right now to make some shots. Um, and we all know, you know, guys like Andy McCann, uh, and just like he's showing us right now, uh, he can make those shots, just bump that right back to the button. Um, and it's now advantage... Uh, you know, Grattan. Yes. Uh, although uh, Jason's got uh, two rocks in the uh, in the forefoot, um, he feels like he's not. Uh, you know, he's not out of jail, <laughs> so he's going to attempt to now remove the guards. Right. Which is the sixth rock of the end. Yeah. And he's up one with the hammer, and uh, that's the right call. Pretty simple.
This will be coming with some vigor, I think, this rock. I like Spencer uh, throwing the, the old uh, style. The old style lift the rock, uh, great weight, uh, super weight takeout. <laughs> Okay. And execution made. Perfect. He replaced two yellows with a blue. James is indicating a draw. Yeah, draw freeze. Yeah, right um, to the pocket. And I think there might be enough room there, so if uh, Andy throws uh, just slightly back four weight, he could just kiss that blue one that's on the button and then roll his yellow stone uh, onto the blue that's on the uh, left-hand side of the forefoot. This rock is coming down really nice. Uh, just a smidgen. No? Yeah. That's good. Good shot. Yeah, nice he shot. Didn't, didn't curl as much as they thought. He threw no. absolutely the perfect weight. Yeah, we've said that a couple times recently, Wayne, that uh, we're not seeing the finish at the end. Uh, is that maybe indicating that the ice is uh, changing or flattening out a little bit? Absolutely, no question about it. Uh, and that's uh, you know that's where uh, the skips have got to uh, to be aware of that. And uh, you know the best skips in the world can adjust uh, where they're putting the broom down uh, right. and uh, picking up on the fact that uh, the ice conditions are changing. And the reason why it's changing, obviously, is because you know the rocks are coming down, they're wearing down the pebble, and uh, they're running a little straighter. Yeah, and every second end, of course, people are delivering rocks, sliding over that with their sliders. That's right. And pushing a rock while they're doing it. Oh, look at that. There's a great shot right there. Yeah. Yeah, Spencer's playing really, really well. It, yeah, that is, uh, that's, the alarm bells have to go off a little bit, having those blues off to the side like that. That's potential for big end for, uh, for Roach. So, so James is going to try, uh, if he makes this double and, you know, slightly rolls in behind that yellow one, yes. um, you know, he could uh, set himself up for a steal here. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to steal one point. Yeah. Trying to uh, to tie the game up uh, and then... Uh, Force one and nine, I and suppose. And then it's, then it's split hammers, right? Yes. So manage the scoreboard. Uh, that's what you're trying to do. There we go. Beautiful shot. Yeah. Beautiful roll. Uh, although Jason is laying one, he's, you know, he's in trouble. Well, not in trouble. I mean, he's, uh, the pressure's on him. Yes. Um, and, uh, but he does have that, yellow, that top yellow one is, is wide open, so he can still make the double. There you go. And lay two. I think he, well, he could possibly, no. Okay. He won't be able to make the double and lay three because he has to hit it too thin yes. so it's going to come back and hit his blue one and if he doesn't if he jams it <clears throat> then that would be the, the worst op, uh, yeah option uh, for for him to uh, to to do so uh, right now he's just trying to make the double and uh, lay two his uh his brother Darren did a good thing there. He came down to look at what the situation was like because uh, sometimes as a rock thrower, it helps to know where exactly you want to hit your rock. Oh boy, is that, uh, yeah. That's gonna jam. Yeah. All right. Good. Another long guard. It's back to um, <clears throat> raise you one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. last time we saw Wayne a, a series of about four or five shots where it went from good for one team to good for the other team and back again. And uh, <clears throat> yes, and we're, we're into that sequence again that's right. here, based on uh, based on some of the misses. <clears throat> They're, and they're, they're not really bad misses. I mean, they're just like, you're talking a quarter of an inch, uh, yeah. uh, half an inch maybe. Um, and, you know, back to, uh, you know, throwing stones uh, 146 feet. Uh, this one here is a little deep. <coughs> yeah, it's lying and right up. Unfortunately, um, that gives uh, 
the advantage back to uh, to Jason. Yeah. So um, that was that was an opportunity there for the Gradden team to uh, put pressure on what, on six? the Roach team uh, and just couldn't execute uh, the option. About six feet heavy, wouldn't it? He probably wanted it more or less on the can to copper. So he threw that. He threw that coal to the top of four foot. I remember playing Eddie Wernich and uh, Neil Harrison yes. uh, playing lead for him back in the day. And uh, Eddie threw a similar shot like that. And he said exactly, I was, uh, I was, I was what, three feet heavy. And Harry said, no. He says you were 18 feet heavy. <laughs> we can sweep at 15 feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, that's, uh, remember, uh, what was it, last end or a couple ends ago, Andy McCann had a shot, and, and they carried it a long, long way. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Just the point you make, uh, or Neil Harrison made. Uh, yeah. yeah. Neil passed away a few years back, but uh, he was quite the character and uh, probably one of the best leads in the, in the world at that time. And, and he only uh, threw one turn, essentially. Out turn, 99% of the time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, Eddie just had him throw the out turn. Yeah. Not a bad result for Roach with that previous shot, but uh, yellow is still number one. Yeah, so James has to come in here, and uh, he, he's like he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yes. <laughs> bad uh, analogy for curling, but anyways, um, so he's got to he's got to bring this almost to the back of the forefoot because wow. if he leaves it in the top of the forefoot, double, the doubles available on the left hand side but also available with the rays on the uh, right hand side right yeah. so so he's got to bring this to the back of the forefoot and uh, and just concede the one yeah that uh, that miss of a guard by Paul Dobson really made a a big difference they should be sweeping this Yeah, it's going to be at least number three, doesn't it? He's number two. Yeah. <clears throat> but we are on an angle right now, so we uh, really can't see exactly yeah, what the... Uh, that's right. You should just let people know yeah. that Wayne and I are behind sheet five. We're not behind sheet four, so... That's right. Uh, sometimes we... Uh, some of our comments uh, you probably can see better uh, on television than we can here live. That blue shot is uh, rock is a very important one. To, uh, that's right. That's his, that's his bailout shot? It's his bailout shot. And I'm not sure if he should be uh, if he should be playing that uh, playing that with his first one be tempted to throw like a hack waiter on that top yellow one with the out turn okay yeah and um, try and spill right the rock that's in the forefoot a little bit over to the right try to open up the uh, the forefoot he has to make sure that he's got a shot to the forefoot with his last uh, stone so yes um, this, is, this is a little little aggressive uh, mind you you know if he makes it perfect uh, again good but uh, but really difficult, really difficult shot. Throwing this a fair bit of weight. Might have been a little tight. I thought he started that a smidge. He's on the guard, yeah. That's what I thought. Wow. Wow. Yeah. After throwing so many nice uh, takeouts, uh, Jason is... Uh, missed on his last two remember last end Wayne so James has called a timeout uh, so um, he has an opportunity right now to put a lot of pressure on uh, on Jason um, they can they can remove the blue one yeah I was wondering about that um, and just move that yellow one but that's still very difficult he's laying two don't forget right yeah uh, right now if he guarded if he guarded the rock that's on the center line top four. The number two rock. The yellow one that's number two. Exactly. Yeah. How difficult of a shot does Jason have now, right? Yeah. So you're trying to steal one. Yes. This, this is this is the first, first of all the object right now is and uh, 
I see Chris Jeffries is out there. He's the, their fifth player. Really good player himself as well. And, uh, and maybe that's what he should be pointing out. Okay, guys, what was our goal before yes. we started this end? Yes. Was to steal one. Right. Okay, let's think about that first. Now let's, let's plan how we're going to make sure that we accomplish what we tried to do in the first place. Right. At the same time, is there an opportunity for us to steal more than one point? Yes, yes. But be very careful. Make sure that we do steal one point. A lot of discussion going on here. What would you be tempted to do, Wayne? Yeah, tap up or guard that top uh, yellow one, the, the number two yeah. rock. So Jason just, like, he didn't throw that last rock very well, right? No. So he'd be, he'd be thinking about that. If I, if I yes. ask him to throw that same shot again, do I think that he is going to make it? I would say probably yes, because he just threw it. Right. So let's change his shot. Okay, yeah. Right? So another shot that would be good is to raise the yellow one that's in there. That one. He could do that. Or just tap it back to the edge of the button and roll over like this. So he's corner got... Corner frozen. Corner frozen to the blue. Yeah. But laying two in the forefoot. Yes. What does Jason do? Yeah. He's got to draw the button yeah. against two. <laughs> yeah. So... That's what would be in my mind right now. And in, in that, that way, I'm not going to set up a triple or, or even a double um, so what to, are, to, let, to let Jason get out of the end, I guess. Yeah. So what do you think he's called here? It almost sounds like he's called what you're talking about, the tap up, or is it the guard? The ice is about the same for either one. No. Both shots are good, yeah. right? I, I call the guard in the first one. Yeah. Good, good call. Uh, but I think he's playing the tap. Which is a really good call. Yeah. There it comes. Now they got to move it. They got to move it. Got to move it. Don't set up the triple. A little light. There's the triple might be there. It had to curl another inch. Yeah. It had to curl another inch. Yeah, <clears throat> but the nice thing about this, I think the triple is only for one, because the top yellow one jams on the second yellow one. Yeah, and number one yellow goes <coughs> back on the blue, and so then there's only there's only the uh, the one blue. So, so they're going to call timeout and uh, discuss the shot and uh, look at the angles. Yeah, there's um, there's no doubt. Grant wishes that Brock had curled a couple more inches. Even one inch, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Andy. Like one inch, it's perfect. Yeah. But there's only a shot for one, I believe. Uh, for uh, for the Roach team. The yeah. other thing is that he he's accomplished that you had mentioned earlier. Uh, you have a good curler who's not throwing the same rock twice, the same shot, the same call. Because. Uh, that's kind of part of strategy 101 too. Is is uh, he's throwing a different shot here? That's right. If say if that rocket stopped short mm -hmm. in the Canada Cup as a guard, then that blue would be there. Still might be there, Wayne. Could it's, he? It's pretty close. I think he's he's gambling on it. He's he, what he's what he's looking at is the drag, right? Yes. So if you hit the uh, the yellow yes. one high it'll move the second yellow one to the right towards yes. the shot rock that's in the forefoot well here we go we're going to find out speculations over here definitely hitting it thin so just for one yeah. yeah good shot good shot it was good shot yep. Brick. i think that's the best he could do uh, there wasn't a triple there for more than uh, for more than one he threw it really well. Yeah. And uh, but did, did you see the drag? Yes. The drag happened. Yes. And happened too much. Yes. He actually hit the back one too uh, too fat. Yes. Because that uh, second stone that was uh, in between the two yellow ones stayed in the back eight foot. It did. Yep. 
so that drag effect uh, was something that, uh, again, Russ Howard, you know, um, introduced to the game uh, back when they were playing skins. Yes. And uh, I remember he made that great shot um, all years ago, but uh, to win the skins game, and I think it was against Eddie, and uh, people thought, oh, that shot's not there, and he was he was looking at two two guards that were three feet off the center line. Yes onto a rock that was on the button and Eddie's rock was on the button and the rocks were staggered in a way that uh, everybody thought that he would miss it and he said uh, to Glenn he says no 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 he says if I hit it on this side the inertia of the stone is going to push that second stone a little sideways yes and I can make that shot and he, and he made it yeah we just saw it here too <laughs> that's why if if if, uh, if you recall uh, just watching that last shot the sweepers were keeping it to prevent it from curling any more than it did. Exactly. Because he wanted to hit it thin, which would drive it sideways. And as you said, he hit it too thin, really. That's right. Yeah. 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 It moved too much, yeah. It moved too much. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, with our youth development program here at the Capital Winter Club, uh, you know, we've got 150 kids every Sunday coming to, yeah. to our club. And, uh, you know, we're teaching them how to throw stones and, and whatever else. And, you know, and, and as they progress through their curling career, um, you know, I'd like to introduce a lot of, uh, you know, these types of, uh, of um, discussions on, you know, the, the, the reaction of the rocks, how things uh, move, also on how to read ice. And, yes. uh, you know, you, you bring in the best ice makers in the world, like, uh, you know, the uh, Greg Ubascos and the Jamie Barassas and and whatever else they actually <clears throat> provide um, um, courses on on how to read ice yes and uh, and how to read chief ice technicians way of maintaining it okay right? yes. because not everybody does the same does the same thing and uh, and just to uh, just to add a little more uh, insight to uh, to the game a little bit more detailed uh, so that uh, our juniors can uh, can really learn the best uh, that they can uh, that they can learn uh, for uh, for our sport. Like we need we need a Briar champion. We need a Brad Gushu. We need uh, you know someone. Yeah. Uh, a Rachel Holman. Rachel or, Holman. You know yeah. I think Andrea and her team are coming along really really strongly. Uh, you know four great players. Uh, they get along really well. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know I think uh, they're going to do exceptionally well at the Scotties this year. Either of these two teams here, you know, like uh, I don't get to see uh, Jason and his team uh, a whole lot, but. Uh, you know, uh, Jamie and uh, and the guys are here practicing all the time. They're putting, you know, putting the time into yes. uh, into the game, and uh, and uh, you know, they're 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 treated uh, to uh, to play on really good ice, and uh, so you know, only good things can happen in, in the future in our sport. Yes. So back to back to the game. Sorry, folks, uh, but uh, yeah, ninth end. Um, you know, four absolutely perfect shots. Yeah. Draw the button, put up the corner guard, put up the center line guard, put up the double corner guard, game on. Yeah. So uh, we're going to see a lot of rocks in play, uh, obviously. And uh, so uh, Spencer here might be a little bit heavy. So this might be a little opportunity for James to uh, create some offense. Exactly uh, what he was looking for. He was looking for that one miss. Yeah. He's got it. Now he can uh, draw around that center line guard and freeze to the rock that's uh, on the button and uh, game on. So this uh, rock from Andy McCann is very important. Andy's had excellent weight all game long and uh, he's done a, a good job of using his sweepers and that is not a backhanded compliment. You want to use your sweepers for these types of shots. And we have noticed the lack of finish weighing too, so Ice is straightening up. There's it no is. question about it. It's not finishing as hard as it uh, did. Very, very good result there. Not quite sure about the speed. Um, I haven't been timing any rocks, but uh, speed looks pretty good. Um, and that's what, you know, the top curlers want to see is uh, really fast ice. It's like uh, golf greens, right? Everybody, yeah. w everybody wants to play Augusta because, uh, you know, you're putting on uh, 13 stint greens. So, yeah. Um, 
I would, I would, I would say that this ice right now would be uh, an Augusta type of uh, scenario. <laughs> yeah, that's how good it is. There, there was some finish on that one there. So uh, there was. Yeah. So Roach uh, has uh, drawn James into play on the uh, forefoot. Although James was indicating perhaps, I guess perhaps a roll behind the corner guards. He's got, he's got that investment there. So. Well, he's got the rocks that uh, he uh, he wants right uh, in play. So yeah. he's got the corner guards. Um, mind you, Jason hasn't been giving him a whole lot to work with. No. Uh, there was the, just that one miss by uh, by Spencer, and uh, they capitalized on that miss. Uh, here's a great looking shot right here. Wow. Holy smoke. How close was that to the guard? Andy McCann, you're a star, my friend. That is one of the greatest shots I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Sweeping. Somebody, did somebody kick a rock? I guess they probably did. Yeah, I think James uh, got a little excited. <laughs> the shot was so good yeah. that he forgot that uh, there was a rock in the back of the 12 foot. Uh, yeah. That's Spencer's rock, right? And uh, yeah, and uh, obviously, um, you know, James is in the game. There's no question. <laughs> uh, what a great shot by Andy, though. Oh my God. Oh, what a great touch. And again, he was using the sweepers. I, yeah. I didn't think it would get by. Be honest. The uh, the roll is a little unfortunate for for Andy. It works well for Roach. That uh, shooter. That which is thrown is uh, half open. Tough shot here. The doubles there though. Yeah, but it you got to hit it thin, very thin. There's Darren Roach. Initial calls to Woe, so the uh, just doing the light scrub. Oh, this is close. I think he's got it. Oh no, they let it go too long. Well, did that ever finish? Ooh, big wow. Time. I, I mean, think that uh, caught them off guard. No I question. Definitely. I that they were happy. Uh, they were happy with that rock. Maybe even a little concerned it was a little wide or, or not curling enough. So uh, James is calling for another draw in here. I think another draw. Top just, twelve. Just a tap. Top like is all, four. All he needs is like back button weight. Just tap the yellow one onto the blue one. A really precise shot. Sweepers are not are not in there yet. Oh, you might be a little heavy. <clears throat> nope. There it is. There it goes. There's, There's the finish. There's the finish. Yeah. Actually, finished too much. Yes, that's true. Because there, <clears throat> there's a. Uh, they're a little bit staggered, so uh, a takeout would remove probably both of them. And maybe even the blue backing. So he's going to, he, he can play the straight back. Uh, looking at the. Uh, That's yeah, what he's looking at. That's what Darren wants to throw. He wants to throw the straight back double. So hit that top blue one that's on the center line, just short of the rings, uh, onto the two yellow ones. If he makes it perfect, there you go. Th this is the. Uh, they use the expression DNA. This is the DNA of this team, isn't it? It's, it's uh, to fix things with weight. That's right. Uh, not that they're incapable of throwing draw. I don't mean that. But that this is their kind of fault setting, default setting. But you're absolutely right, Andy. Like it's, uh, you know, every team has, uh, you know, favorite shots. Uh, yeah. You know, favorite, favorite situations. Uh, this one here, he's close. He's got it. Oh, he jammed it. Wow. Okay. I don't think they saw that. Uh, no, I. <laughs> <laughs> I know I didn't. Uh, so what's James looking at now? I think he's yeah. You're down. You're down to playing nine. I think he got a draw. He's looking at the uh, hit and roll here. Yeah. Is that because the second blue one is shot rock? It might be. I I can't I. It, I yeah, don't think it is, but it might be. Yeah. yeah, we can't see from here. But anyways, um, yeah, it's, I mean, obviously a good call. Uh, but it's going to be made. But it's got to be made. And this is the shot that caught uh, 
Team Roach by surprise. Just about now, it took off a lot more than they thought it would. No? It's perfect. Oh, he could have swept that a little bit. Yeah. Could have swept that a little bit. <coughs> that You're right, Andy, eh? That finished hard. Yeah. Hey, caught him off guard as well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the comments are not... Uh, they're not negative. It's just uh, you know the way that the rocks are reacting right yeah. now, and it's uh, ca uh, causing uh, both skips yeah. uh, to uh, to miss the sweeping calls. Right <laughs> on rocks that were well thrown. Mm -hmm. Is there a double here? Yellow on the yellow. There is a double. Uh, you make the double. You roll away from behind that center line guard. And gives James an opportunity to draw in behind. Right. Um, but you know, worst case scenario, you're you're giving uh, giving James two. You're tied coming home with the hammer. I think uh, again there. If you were to script the game uh, before before it started, tied coming home with a hammer is uh, where you'd like to be. Uh, oh, for sure. <laughs> you'd like to be sitting. Well, especially being such a good hitting team, that uh, they're going to try very hard to keep clutter down. This is the uh, the out turn takeout. This is close. This is well thrown. Well thrown. On and off, on and off. Who's going to jam it? Wow. That's okay. unfortunate because he did throw that well. He threw that really well. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's an opportunity. So now three's in play. Yeah. Now you're going to need a miss from Jason with his last rock, but uh, back to the Christmas tree. So, uh, you know, you put, uh, you put one uh, top. Eight? Full eight. Yeah. Three quarters buried behind that guard. Yeah, and they'll be covering three three quarters of the number one rock. That's right. So therefore, you're guaranteed, pretty much guaranteed to score a deuce. Yes. Um, and uh, back to uh, back to the playbook, and that's where uh, you know James James wanted to. He wants to score too. Yeah. He doesn't mind being uh, tied coming home without, uh, because with the five rock rule, he figures that well, oh, man, you know. I still have a chance to win this game. I can steal the point. So, and with the way that Jamie and uh, Andy are playing today, yeah, he should be well set up. Yeah, those guys are playing really, really sweeping really, really well as well. And uh, you, know, you know what a great friend and, and uh, great teammates. Uh, yeah, is this a little heavy? No, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So James Gratton is scoring two this end as long as he makes his last rock. <laughs> yeah. And Jason's got a tough shot. He's I mean, going for the pick, is he, on the back for, one? He's for the pick on the back one, and, he, and he's, uh, he's saying, okay, James, here's your deuce. Yeah. We're tied coming home. I've got the hammer. Advantage me. Right. <clears throat> it's interesting. He's going for the pick as opposed to driving the blue back. I suppose there's more... Well, if he drove the blue back, then he'd be uh, there's no possibility of a three bagger, yeah. and uh, so he doesn't want that. So he's no. going to play a very conservative, um, and uh, tell James, "Well, you're going to have to draw the four foot again for your uh, for your one, this for your two. Sorry, this might be a little wide." Yeah, he's he's had no. more success. No, he's good. He's good. He's had uh, more success with his out turn uh, takeouts and in turn in turns. Eh? But That's a good observation too, Andy. Right? So, yeah. so skips. Uh, you know, when you're when you're playing the game, you're you're trying to figure out. You know, what are the opposition's weaknesses? Like nobody throws both turns, both types of shots. You know, perfectly. So, yeah. so you try and uh, and pick away at at weaknesses and. Uh, and that that could be one of them. I'm not sure uh, yeah. if it is or not. But uh, I'm just saying that uh, that's that's what you try to do. Uh, you know, the guy might be 98% uh, out turn uh, maker and 97% in turn maker. Well, guess what? I'm going to go with the 1% odd that he's going to miss the yeah. in turn, right? So, so I'm going to play that. I'm going to play that side. Well, I'm sure people, when you go to the Briar, people like Russ Howard, well, all the skips study the oh, yeah. uh, percentages quite carefully. Uh, you know, what's well, Talon's what intern like versus his out turn? Yeah, and, and that's uh, and that's what the coach's uh, job is and the fifth player's job uh, is uh, is to uh, to do that. So there we go. Tie game, folks. You couldn't ask for a better finish than this. Yeah. 
you know, regardless of who has the hammer, um, you know, these, <laughs> these two teams have been fighting it tooth and nail for yeah. nine ends. They're they tied. And the last end is going to decide who, which team is going to represent New Brunswick at the Briar yeah. in Kingston, Ontario. I don't know if my good buddy uh, Ken Thompson is listening, but anyways, uh, he's the chair of the Briar Committee in, uh, in Kingston. And um, uh, when I was inducted into the uh, Governor General's uh, Curling Club uh, last fall in uh, Niagara Falls uh, he was there and he was the MC and um, Les Harrison is the guy that uh, that nominated me and uh, and thanks Les for uh, for doing that and uh, I really appreciate it and uh, you know what an honor for me to uh, to be there uh, and uh, but uh, Kenny Thompson uh, Andy you probably you obviously don't know him but I used to curl against him back yes. in Ontario back when I was there in in the 80s and early 90s and uh, just a character, just a great character, and uh, I just want to wish him, you know, the best of luck and uh, hope that uh, his ticket sales are going as planned and uh, and his event is going to, uh, you know, to, is going to rock, uh, rock the country, uh, you know, come March. It should draw very well because it's uh, close enough to the, the big three of Ottawa, Montreal, and Toronto, and being a lovely place to visit anyway, uh, it should draw very well. Now, the Governor General's Curling Club, is that the one that is limited to 100 people at a time? Is that the way that works? That's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, so in, other, in, in, in order for someone, uh, a yep. space to be freed up, someone's got to pass on. <laughs> That's right. So, so there must be a, an interesting cast of characters in that, that uh, group. Yeah, that, uh, that whole, indu- and I was inducted with uh, Neil Houston, um, Bob Weeks, uh, there was, uh, uh, geez, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember all, all of the uh, all of the inductees, but there was uh, six of us uh, that were inducted uh, last uh, last fall. We had a great time, a great banquet. Uh, we played uh, three three days of golf in, uh, in wow. Niagara, and uh, and uh, yeah, some great stories, uh, you know, um, with uh, with the boys. Uh, and uh, and Les Harrison, you know, like uh, he's such a gentleman. I mean, yes. you know, he's been you know president of the New Brunswick Curling Association, uh, the Canadian Curling Aso- uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, Curling Canada, and uh, you know the World Curling Federation been involved, and uh, you know he's um, what a builder uh, to our sport. Uh, he introduced uh, the university uh, national championships and uh, and world championships. Uh, he was um, he was the uh, the guy that was instrumental in, in making that happen. Uh, so yeah, he's a really good friend of mine, and uh, and I uh, and I just I just can't say enough about about uh, Les Harrison and what he's accomplished uh, for curling in in our province and in our country. Well, the end is well underway, Wayne, and uh, the first rock uh, for Roche, but Byzantine's rock uh, went back uh, 12, not really ideal. Jamie Brennan's put up two uh, centerline guards, but now Benson's come back and made a lovely draw behind those guards. Uh, full eight, not quite biting the four. Absolutely. Um, so James here has got he's got a couple of choices. Uh, that rock is in the eight foot, so more than likely it's not going to score. No. Right. I agree. So uh, he could lay up another centerline guard. Yes. And uh, and because there's a double peel on those two guards. There right is there, all day. I, yeah. I'd be tempted to guard those two guards. Yes. And uh, and let uh, Jason uh, try and triple peel them or whatever else. And uh, and if he doesn't, I mean, you're looking for a miss, right? So yes. how how do I generate this miss? Uh, right now, by putting this rock into the house. Guess what Jason's doing? He doesn't care where this yellow rock is going to end up. He's peeling those two center line guards all day. Yep. He doesn't care about that rock in no. the forefoot. He's peeling those two center line guards. Yeah. And he's actually looking to see how they're lined up. No, he, he's presenting the options. What he's, what he's afraid of is that he's afraid that the yellow ones are going to jam onto his blue one. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't even care about that. There's, right. there's drag there. See, look at there. Darren, Darren's telling him. 
Oh, uh, okay. Well, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a choice. It's a choice of uh, of shots. Um, this is not a shot that I would uh, that I would be attempting. Um, you know. Yeah. Um, just because. Which two stones right now are going to cause me the most grief? The, the two in front. The two guards up there. They're yeah. the ones that are going to cause me the most grief if I have last rock, tied game, in the 10th end. Right. James Grattan is going like right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. And he's got the right guy to do it. Andy McCann scurled very, very well. <coughs> So Andy, as this shot is coming down, I just want to, uh, you know, point out, uh, you know, the umpires and uh, yes. that have been out there, you know, like uh, like Susan Lister and uh, Jean Cahuet and uh, and Lorne and uh, you know, and the crew uh, from uh, the New Brunswick Curling Association. Uh, you know, it's cold out there, folks. Uh, you know, they're out there with their woolies on and whatever, and uh, making sure that uh, the the game is, uh, you know, being. Uh, being played uh, the way it should be played yeah. so hats off to them okay. oh, for, very much so uh, Wayne Spencer's doing the double peel here so back to uh, the drag oh. effect yeah. yeah so you see and that's why I thought he should have played that <laughs> earlier on um, so one shot too late I think uh, yes. is, is, is the call yeah, just about the officials. It is cold out there. I've never been so cold in my life as when I was helping with the Little Rocks and Junior program and standing out there watching people throw rocks. It's, it's amazing. A lot of people say, isn't it cold to curl? It really isn't because if you're busy throwing rocks and sweeping rocks, you you know, if properly dressed, you don't notice it. But boy, oh boy, if you stand out there, you can't get enough layers on. Exactly. And Wayne, I know you do coaching, so... Uh, Electric socks and things like that are the <laughs> yeah. order of the day. Yeah, hand warmers. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. But it's so much fun being out there with the kids. Oh, my God, I just enjoy it. I like the little rockers, like the six, five and six-year-olds and, uh, you know, doing so snow angels on the ice. The other coaches get mad at me for doing that, but, hey, the kids love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. That's what you call a long guard. That's a long guard, yeah. Yeah. You see, that's why I thought that would have been the call yeah. with the other two guards yes. because uh, because of the double guard peel. So, you know, you gotta you gotta generate and you gotta set up your your opportunities. Right now, it's not a bad situation for uh, Roach at all. No, because that uh, yellow rock uh, of Grattan's came to the back of the forefoot. It was a little bit long. Exactly. So but I mean, it, it, you know, you're, you're going to trade shots now uh, till uh, till the very last one. Uh, you know, Jason's got to draw the button. Yeah, got to draw the button with. Uh, but it, it, it's going to be an open draw. He doesn't have to uh, worry about coming around. Uh, you know, going through a port or something like that. Right. Uh, the guard is going to be offset. Uh, actually, he's he's, he's going to have two shots. You can have the raise uh, blue onto yellow because yeah. you can't put a perfect guard right. and guard both or the intern draw to the button. So that should be in his mind right now. Um, but, uh, you know, the first uh, first job is to make sure that there's no guards. So, uh, or n no more than one guard. Uh, so peel the guards, just keep peeling the guards. Yeah. And don't, don't try the other side because you're gonna jam it and then you have an opportunity for for the uh, throwing stone to uh, jam on the blue one that's on yes. the left and then roll back towards the center, right? So, right. no, you don't want to do that. You don't even want to attempt that. A lot of conversation here. Uh, yeah, okay, so go the other way. Because that blue one, that blue one on the left is, uh, is not in question. No, it's not really a, a problem. This is gonna be thin. Oh. It's been improved. <laughs> oh. But it, it really hasn't uh, changed the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the situation here. James no. still has to put, uh, you know, he wants to put this guard on the uh, double H of the Canada Cup. Uh, 
yes logo and and oh, oh and folks yes uh, we are hosting uh, the canada cup uh, in uh, in december of 2020 um, an opportunity for Fredericton to um, to host uh, the third largest curling event in Canada. Um, I really want to thank uh, you know the city of Fredericton uh, and the University of New Brunswick uh, for uh, coming uh, together and partnering with us to uh, to make that happen. So it's a tri-party um, uh, event: uh, Capital Winter Club, University of New Brunswick, and uh, the city of Fredericton. And uh, man, oh man, it's going to be a show. The top seven men's teams and the top seven women's teams in the country coming to Fredericton at the uh, Aitken University Center in uh, December 2020. With the winners getting uh, free berths to the Olympic trials, isn't that true? That's right, exactly. Yeah. And, so. uh, and uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, we've been treated to a lot of really great curling uh, in the last few years, opportunities to... Uh, to host uh, national and international events and you know we had the uh, the Everest uh, curling challenge in August of yes. 2017 and that was a hit and Huge. we sold out in three and a half days yes. I'd like for us to sell out the University uh, Aiken University Center for the Canada Cup uh, I'll give uh, you know our listeners and all of our curling fans uh, seven days to sell out <laughs> okay <laughs> a lot of work's going into it folks and uh, we're so, so pleased and honored to uh, to host that event. Well, we have a timeout here. The team Roach is debating what they should be doing. James threw a very nice guard. They could peel the guards, couldn't they? That would be my choice. But they, they're they really looking at something in the rings. Uh, Darren Roach is, is uh, advocating for uh, top four-foot draw. I thought they might even look at going through the between the two yellows and removing, uh, maybe trying a blue on the yellow. But removing the guards, uh, I think that's the that's the normal, isn't it, Wayne? Uh, well, it is. Uh, so I'm James. Uh, I made that shot absolutely perfect. I told uh, you that I wanted it on the double H's yes. for the Home Hardware uh, Canada Cup uh, logo. He was uh, three inches short, but absolutely perfect. So. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. Yes. And I wanted, the reason why I put that shot there is because I wanted you to leave it there, and you're leaving it there. So now I know you're going to give me an opportunity to win this game now. Yes. So Jason should have been thinking about that, and he should have been removing that rock. They're really sweeping this. Wow. <laughs> you probably can hear it quite clearly. Wow. It is very difficult to. Oh, he is shot rock, I guess. Yeah, they're claiming it's. We can't tell here. I would have guessed yellow myself, to be honest. But uh, that little roll off the, their own rock uh, is spun in. Now James Gratton and his team have taken a time out and they're debating about uh, what they should do. That was a great shot by uh, Jason Roach. That uh, It was almost, a, not a disaster, but it was almost uh, a, a miss because if it hit that uh, blue one. A little uh, thicker. A little then thicker. James, James is putting up the center line guard. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, Jason would have had to uh, come through that port between those two yellow guards, right? Yes. So, um, Wonderful. you know, one of those situations where, uh, you know, he chose to play that shot. Uh, yeah. You know, like I said, the other option was uh, to peel the guard. Yeah. Um, and so he put uh, basically all his eggs in one basket, uh, you know, on his, on his first shot. Um, and <clears throat> the sweeping by the, the team was phenomenal. The call... His brother, uh, Darren, was was uh, yelling for all he was worth, uh, slapping the broom to get attention. And uh, it worked. It was a great result. Like I say, uh, the overhead camera tell for sure, but uh, Team Roach are, are quite convinced that they are number one here. And what's 
James doing? Is he trying to uh, peel that out? Uh? No, James is no, he's going to try and try, throw the soft shot. So back 12. Yes. Maybe through the house weight. Come in, skin that uh, center line guard, bump the blue one to the back eight foot and lay two. And uh, again, leave uh, Jason with the port shot. This is very, very close. Really, really nicely thrown shot. Does he have enough weight to bump it back far enough? I think he does. Wow. Oh, what a great shot. Wow. What a great <laughs> shot. Fist pumps on that one, James Gratton. I'm yes, you deserve it, buddy. I'm glad that you were here with me, Wayne, because I didn't quite understand what he was doing, and uh, that was a super finesse shot. What a great, great shot. He had to curl across the face of the roach rock and push it back through the forefoot by his own. Uh and a full team shot because they were sweeping uh, like crazy. Yeah, Jamie's over there looking for the defibrillator. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, <he is>. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, like I said, uh, guess what? The center line guard. Yeah, eh? that's the killer. Eh? Isn't it? Now he's got to draw the button. Um, I just want to mention that the uh, we talked about the Canada Cup before Jason throws the last rock. So the tickets are going to start uh, to be on sale on February 16th. And you can go online at uh, curling.ca and purchase your tickets. And we'll see you in December at the uh, University Aitken Center. Here we go. Draw to the button. It's there. It is there. It looks like it's a little heavy. Yeah. I don't think they should be sweeping this. James Gratton is going to the briar. Yeah. Yep. He, he had the line, Wayne. Yep. It was just heavy. They're going to the briar. Wow. wow. Tough loss. What a game. What a great game, but that center line guard really, uh, really cost them a whole bunch. Yeah. So, Andy, I'm going to leave you uh, to uh, close it off. Uh, yeah. I've got to get down there to do the uh, <laughs> Master to do the of ceremonies for, yes. the, uh, for the ceremonies. All right. All right. Good. Thanks was, a lot, Wayne. Appreciate enjoyable. that. Thank, thank you very you. much, man. Yeah. Folks, thank you very much. So what we have here, we have the, uh, the teams hugging. Uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, if you were to ask James Gratton right now, does this ever uh, get old or boring? And he would say no, because you can tell the enthusiasm there. Hugs all around. And it it would be gut-wrenching gut for the uh, for the Roach team, because they played so well. I, I really didn't think uh, that... Uh, James Grant really had much of a, a shot there uh, with his last, uh, but they called it. Uh, they called the ice. Uh, he threw it very well. The sweepers carried it, and uh, just just the right way to knock the uh, fabulous first uh, Jason Roach shot through. We'll be having uh, the presentations here shortly. Uh, I don't know, uh, Lauren. Are we carrying the uh, the presentations? Okay. Family members have come out and they're uh, giving hugs. I see uh, Bob Brennan, uh, Jamie's dad out there, uh, various members of the family. Like I say, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, happy folks out there congratulating. There's throughout the weekend. Uh, there's Ken Gratton, James's uh, dad. He's out uh, hugging as well. Rob Blanchard, photographer, immortalizing the, uh, the, the, the scene. But like I say, uh, as much as this team's happy, uh, the Team Roach ha have to be, uh, I, I don't know if disappointed is the right way, just, just sad because uh, they played very well. Um, as Wayne mentioned, they, they made a decision about the uh, center line guard that James Gratton had threw. And uh, initially, after uh, Jason Roach's first shot, it looked like uh, they'd made the right decision. But uh, after James's shot, that, that was clutch. Uh, club president uh, Frank Armstrong of the Capital Winter Club is on the ice with microphone in hand. And uh, we'll be doing presentations. We'll probably see Wayne Talon uh, shortly himself. 
might not be able to see it, but there's a, there's a lot of people down on the boards uh, just below us here. There's Ken Grant. As Wayne mentioned, the uh, briar this year will be in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, there's a lot of top teams that uh, are expected to be there. I think we're just starting now to see the uh, decisions being made, uh, provincial playdowns and territorial playdowns, to see who is going. I think one team that's looking like they're in very good shape to go is the uh, uh, Jamie Cooley team out of the Northwest Territories. Uh, I had a look at online at the playdowns, and he was leading the way. And of course, his brother uh, is repeating his prior winner. Okay, there's Frank Armstrong. I guess there's Wayne Talon, our commentator. So I don't know. Can we cut into the uh, microphone feed? They haven't started speaking yet. A curling Association. I don't know if he's current president, but I think he was past president of the uh, association. Yeah. It was quite a game, folks. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, at the first end, uh, Roach team forced uh, Grattan to one, and then they came back with a big three ender, and that looked very big at the time. Uh, the, the team, uh, Roach team, dominated the, the first third of the game. The middle third of the game saw uh, Grattan come back and get a two to tie the game at 3-3, three, three. and then uh, Roach was forced to one and then stole one. And again, that looked important at the time, putting them up five to three. They then forced Talent, or sorry, Talent, take uh, Grant to take one to make it 5 4. And then uh, Talent in turn forced uh, Roach to take one in the uh, seventh to make it uh, 6 4. And then, uh, sorry, 7 4. And then uh, in the uh, ninth, Grant and his team fought hard to get two. And uh, to tie the game, forcing them to be in a steal position in the 10th end. Now in the 9th end, the, uh, the Roach team played it carefully. Uh, they uh, were quite pleased, uh, comfortable I should say, with the idea of uh, giving up the two because they would have last rock in the 10th end. And sure enough, it did come down to last rocks. Uh, he was very close, Jason, to uh, make the draw for his, uh, his one to win, but it was just a little bit heavy. When I say just a little bit heavy, it was about two or three feet heavy. Uh, it certainly had the line because it, uh, it actually went across a uh, portion of the butt. Uh, we now see the, uh, the two teams out in the ice, uh, including uh, for uh, the Grattan team, including Mark. Jeffries, who's the furthest to the left, uh, he's their fifth player and coach, and we see the uh, the Roach team as well. Wayne is reading his prepared remarks; uh, they were delivered <laughs> up during the broadcast here. And as I mentioned, uh, with him are uh, Frank Armstrong and Dimitri Macarides and club manager. Uh, Jamie Watson. Club President Frank Armstrong is now speaking. And speaking, uh, making directing remarks to the two teams. Frank was here all weekend. He, he was part of the uh, volunteer ice crew that helped uh, maintain the ice during the, the uh, four days of competition. 
four full days of competition. Putting on an event like this, folks, takes a lot of volunteer effort uh, wherever you are located, and uh, that is why quite often you will see it, uh, it it's a feather in the cap of the club uh, that hosts the, the event because it shows that they have a dedicated group of volunteers. Frank's almost finished as she marks. On the table beside uh, Wayne Talon, you see the uh, tankards, the uh, pewter tankards, as well as the crests. Uh, those crests, uh, the Purple Hearts, they are known as. They date way back to the days when Imperial Tobacco was a sponsor. And they, uh, they had a tobacco project. I think it was chewing tobacco product that uh, was called Purple Heart. Now speaking is Dimitri Macarides who uh, came up through the uh, Little Rocks and Junior program here at the Capital Winter Club and is now involved in the uh, in the New Brunswick Curling Association. As Wayne Talon mentioned, the, uh, the attendance at this event uh, this year was, uh, was great. Uh, for the most part, the stands in the renovated uh, uh, head house bar area were, uh, were full. And for today's game, there were a lot of people here from Oromocto cheering on the, uh, the Grat team. And likely there was quite a few people from St. John as well. Uh, St. John uh, fans travel well for curling events. And uh, whether they're Miramichi, Moncton, Woodstock, or Fredericton, you generally see a good crowd of people from St. John and uh, Moncton and Fredericton. So Frank uh, Armstrong is going to be walking over to the team and handing out jackets to the Roach team. Being congratulated with runners up prizes. And Jason Roach is speaking. We forget that the uh, curling is very much a ladies and gentlemen sport. Being uh, a good winner and being a good loser is very important. We did not hear the remarks, but I think he <laughs> he, uh, he graciously accepted the, the gift and uh, and the best wishes of the organizers. Team Gret to receive their tankards and their Purple Hearts. There's James Gret. Paul Dobson, Andy McCann, and Jamie Brennan. As well as Mark Jeffries. As I look down below me here on the ice sheet, there's a, a lot of family members for the various players. James Gretton is thanking uh, the organizers, playing tribute to uh, his opponents, not only today's opponents, Roach, but the other players as well, thanking his uh, friends and family for coming and supporting him. Also thanking the organizers and volunteers for working on the event. And as I mentioned, uh, it's being recorded for posterity with uh, photographer uh, Rob Blanchard. This will be the uh, 13th time I believe it's 13, if not 14, that uh, James has gone to the Briar nine times as Skip and four times as a member of the Russ Howard team of the early 2000s, late 1990s. Back in those days, uh, 
James was still riding the fame of uh, being Jimmy the Kid at the uh, Calgary Briar, I believe in the mid-90s, uh, with uh, his mates Paul Power, Daryl Nallen, and Charlie Sullivan Jr. They made it all the way to the uh, semifinal when they lost to, I, th I believe it was Vic Peters. So James and his mates have had considerable success at the Briar. Yeah, James is uh, continuing to speak. You can tell he's <laughs> with practice uh, 13 times. He's become quite comfortable with uh, speaking to the crowd. are offered. James is taking his Purple Heart and tankard. That will go proudly in his uh, trophy case along with the uh, other 12 to 13 trophies. And that's just at the men's level. Uh, James uh, has had great success as a junior curler as well, losing a Canadian final. including remarks from Wayne Talon. And again, the Briar will be in uh, Kingston, Ontario in early March. And uh, a lot of us will be glued to the television set to watch all the players, including uh, our New Brunswick reps. Now this is nice, uh, kind of hugs and uh, high fives from uh, the competitors, Andy McCann and Jamie Brennan going over. Again, the uh, team players.